And Happy New Year from South Florida, the Orange Bowl in Miami, home of the 59th Federal Express Orange Bowl and the Nebraska Cornhuskers kicking it off to start the game. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy and John Dockery as the great freshman kick returner Tamarik Vanover has to down the ball on a very deep kickoff by Byron Bennett. So Coach Tom Osborne and his Nebraska Cornhuskers coming in as a substantial underdog to the ACC champions led by the great junior quarterback Charlie Ward. John Jackson's his runner. William Floyd will get the ball. Some primarily a blocker. Vanover's a sensation at wide receiver. And the offensive line is very fast. Not as big as Nebraska's, but these guys can all run. Florida State, a program built on speed. They go to the fast break offense to start the game. The shotgun offense. This is Charlie Ward. Dropping to throw on first down. Looking deep at Vanover. And then he throws over the middle. The ball was intended to Kez McCorvey, number 88, as Nebraska Trump got the big rush on. The uh, Nebraska Cornhuskers started down with six defensive backs, a five-man front, and a dime package behind it. And an update, the IBM OS2 Fiesta Bowl. Syracuse prevails over sixth-ranked Colorado, 26-22. After the missed first down throw, Ward sets himself at the 15-yard line. Second down and 10. Quick out pattern. And Charlie Ward off target on his second throw. This time he was going to Kevin Knox. As we look at the Huskers on defense, they're big and tough. John Perella, NFL scouts think he'll be a standout there. David Noon in the nose tackle. Moore a pass rusher. Travis Hill is a first-team All-American, a terrific outside backer. Rev Alberts, Mike Anderson, and Ed Stewart. Very good players. And the linebacker core of Nebraska in the secondary. And not used to a lot of pass offense. They see the run mostly in the big eight. And now here comes a third consecutive pass. Or does it? Charlie Ward is on the run. Can they get to him? They cannot. Charlie Ward breaks it. He's across the 45-yard line and slides to a halt all the way out at the 49. So on third and 10, the ever dangerous Charlie Ward breaks a big one from 26 from yards. From behind the offense, you see the two back set. First two downs, they go with a shotgun on third and long. They bring in the two backs, but this is the secret weapon. We've got a flag on the play. Ooh. It's coming it back against Florida State. But uh, Charlie Ward, the kid they call the choir boy, is the third running back in that uh, Florida State backfield. Flag back to the 20-yard line. Illegal formation on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Bill Gross, our referee. This is a Southeastern Conference officiating team. So the big run by Charlie Ward now is negated on the penalty call. And again, third down arises. This time they need 15. Tom Osborne wanted a lot of blitzing on Charlie Ward, but it has to be a contained blitz. If you come all out recklessly, he'll just sidestep and break the big play as he just did, the one that was called back. Ward with a deep drop looking to screen the ball out. He does. Nebraska is there, though, to shut it down at the 25-yard line. Sean Jackson got the ball, got ahead for a 10-yard gain on the screen pass play. And Terry Keneally, a nose tackle, was on the stop for the Huskers. So, Florida State stalls on its opening drive, and Coach Bowden sends out his kicking team. But that's a good sample of the Florida State offense. This is a very difficult offense if you're standing across the line of scrimmage from it. Really figure out exactly what they're going to do. Passing situations they run. They like the screen and, of course, the fast break shotgun. Not a great punting game for Florida State, as you see. Nebraska is one of the best in the country. Wimberley's kick is going to take a hop at a tear him out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. So Nebraska's first offensive set will come with good field position, just a 27-yard punt. And here comes the Nebraska offense. Tommy Frazier, a true freshman quarterback, very consistent, very smart, mistake-free young player. 100 passes, only one intercepted. Ten have been for touchdowns. Their running game averages almost six yards a carry for the third time. In the last four years, Nebraska is the number one rushing team in America, but they opened Trump with a spread formation. Now, this is something we expected them to do to try to loosen up the defense of Florida State. Three wide receivers set to the near side. A quick out. Frazier connects with his man. Running high to the ball is Corey Dixon, and he breaks it inside the 35-yard line. Big block by Calvin Jones. A running back, a 19-yard play on first down. Even though it's a pass, Don, this is a screen. 
Great sell job by Tommy Frazier. Excellent blocks out in front. Dixon gets up underneath the first one. 19 easy yards on the opening play of the game for the Cornhuskers. So after the 27-yard punt, Nebraska comes out, gets the quick out. And Corey Dixon takes it ahead. And now Nebraska goes first and 10 at the 33-yard line of Florida State. Hits back. Well done by the quarterback, Frazier. And by the running back, taking the ball ahead was Calvin Jones. Big Dan Footman was the lead tackler, and then All-American Marvin Jones hit him. Uh, one of the things that Tom Osborne was concerned about was good footing here in the Orange Bowl field. Been raining for the last couple of three days, and with the option, you need to be able to turn up as you watch Marvin Jones, shade tree, overrun Calvin Jones. Jones with a nice pickup. The last time these two teams met was in the 1990 Fiesta Bowl. Florida State unhandily 41-17. Frazier, that was a call play. Quarterback Keith. And right there to get him was Sterling Palmer, a huge backer. Time to consider how far this Frazier kid has come. 365 days ago, he was introduced as one of the 24 best Florida high school football players at the Citrus Bowl at halftime. Now, 365 days later, he starts for Nebraska in the Orange Bowl. And he's back in his home state. Tommy Frazier's from Brayton in Florida, went on a recruiting visit to Nebraska. Now we see what the Huskers will go to. Third down and six, brought on the 29-yard line. Frazier with a quick rollout. Loads the rush. Takes it ahead and dives very close but short. Oh, the first down. He's inside the 25-yard line, taken down by linebacker Ken Alexander, number 36. Nice rollout here, but uh, Florida State did a good job on defense. This was going to be a shovel pass. Watch the running back turn around, Calvin Jones. 44 was going to get it, but Frazier, who uh, everybody you talk to at Florida State says, this kid does not play like a freshman, keeps the ball, goes on the rollout for positive yardage. They're going for it on fourth down, Don. Indeed they are. Need one yard. All position inside the 25-yard line of FSU. No score. This is Nebraska's first possession after stopping Florida State. Frazier turns it up, turns it ahead. He didn't get there. Marvin Jones. A great play by a player that many pro scouts say is the best defensive player in America, linebacker Marvin Jones. Here's Jones. It's the reverse by the quarterback into the boundary. They run the option. And Jones with that cat-like quickness, look at that read, directly at the quarterback. Absolutely remarkable. You can't teach that to a kid. No quarterback, uh, excuse me, no coach in the world would admit to teaching that to Marvin Jones. That's just the way he plays. The Federal Express Orange Bowl is brought to you by Federal Express. For documents, packages, and freight worldwide, our most important package is yours. By Alamo, there are over 4 million miles of roads in Alamo territory. And with Alamo, all those miles are free. By Nicoderm, nicotine transdermal system. Ask your doctor about Nicoderm. And by the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. Back at the 1993 Federal Express Orange Bowl, and on the sidelines covering the game for us is John Dockery. Doc? You know, Don, you were speculating about weather conditions, near-perfect weather conditions here tonight. A slight breeze at Nebraska's back. Had they tried that 41-yard field goal, they would have gotten a little bit of help, but not that much. Conditions near-perfect. Back to you. And obviously the question is, why didn't Tom Osborne try for three points there? Yeah, I know he wants to go ahead. We both know that. He wanted to get that first score. And now they go to the run to the Seminoles, and Tiger McMillan, a small, quick running back, takes it ahead. This, uh, David White tackled him. Excuse me, Don. Uh, this offense that Florida State runs is a combination of a lot of uh, different football teams. The hurry up from Sam White to Tampa, the shallow crosses from Sam Ritigliano at Liberty Baptist. Right. And uh, Charlie Ward is in charge of it all. It's hand signals uh, to the offensive lineman and to the receivers. Second down play call coming up now for Ward. Seminoles beat six. Again, he gets time. That was the outcat on a fine defensive play. The ball was thrown to Shannon Baker. And Tyrone Hughes, who plays both ways. Tyrone Hughes, a great kick returner. 
Coach Osborne says there's not anything he can't do for us out there. That time, he made the stop after a two-yard game. Boy, they're certainly saying this get a lot of respect, Nebraska. Six defensive backs stay in the game. they got a five-man front and six defensive backs. Actually, it's a four-man front with one linebacker, 96 white, is kind of a spy against him. Valley Ward has thrown the ball two times, four times. It's completed two, and here's a fine play. Good for a first down as Tamaric Vanover goes up for the ball. That was the fifth throw of the game by 17, Charlie Ward. His third completion, the first for any real yardage. Uh, Vanover was very lazy out of that break, Don. This, this was very close to an interception. You can see excellent coverage there by Kenny Wilhite. Of course, uh, we got to qualify what we say about Vanover. This kid is, he's a puck. He's a true freshman. They're just learning what this kid can do in football. He's at the top of your screen. They're going to go deep to him again any time. They really want to get the ball to Vanover deep. And here on the runner, Ward, as he fires it out, taking it down is Tiger McMillan. But David White again comes across the field, a linebacker with great lateral speed, and he runs the play down. Uh, Don, as you look at this defense that uh, Nebraska is running, they respect the six defensive backs, and here's another aspect of it. Uh, from behind the offense, I was going to try to show you the spy there, but look at the quickness. Just tremendous quickness. Of course, this kid's a point guard for Florida State's uh, basketball team. Pat Kennedy loves him. That Coach Osborne said, we know about his basketball, and we wish he was playing it. He will be after this game. Here's a blitz, and somehow... Tyrone Hughes can't take him down, but he's quickly finished off as Charlie Ward as more blitzers are coming, and there's a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Keneally was also on a play drop. Don, this, uh, here's the call. Offsides defense. This uh, Nebraska defense known as a very, very aggressive defense. Here's the man who comes up with the blitz on Charlie Ward. Uh, they're really pumping a lot of people out of the defensive backfield right into Charlie Ward's face. Tyrone Hughes does, in fact, make the sack, but it doesn't count because of the penalty. And the penalty gives Florida State a first down. There's no score. Eight minutes and 58 seconds to play in the first quarter of this 1993 Federal Express Orange Bowl, a place of heartbreak for Coach Tom Osborne. January 1, 1984, you may recall, his one-point loss when his team was number one in America. They went for two, didn't make it. Miami won the game in his first national championship. 31-30. Here is look at Charlie Ward weaving his way through tacklers. And again, David White is able to contain him. Tackled by 96, David White. Now we'll come back and now show you the aspect of this defense. Here's David White right here. His sole responsibility. Watch where Charlie Ward goes. And wherever he goes, go with him. He does, in fact, make the tackle here. You see him blitzing. He's watching for Charlie Ward. And there he gets a hold of a leg. And we come back to live action on second down and 10. Ward fires to the outside. McCorvey takes the ball. And he's taken down with a face mask tackle by Toby Wright. And that will tack on yardage as the Florida State drive will continue with penalty yardage. Little out pattern. McCorvey gets away, and there's the face mask on. Actually, it, actually, I don't know that he grabs the face mask, but his head bounced back so quickly that the official on the sideline. Grabbing the face mask by the defense. He got, it. He got it. First down. He got, he got the bar on the top of the helmet. Certainly not intentional by Wright. Early in this game, Nebraska, after a short punt by Florida State on the opening possession, moved the ball all the way down inside the 25-yard line of FSU. The Huskers went for a first down on fourth and one. They didn't get there. The great Marvin Jones made the stop. Now, Florida State, with its super-powered offense, is starting to move. Ward lofting a long ball. Nobody near it. The closest man to it was Tyrone Hughes. Putting the heat on was inside linebacker Ed Stewart. Uh, Kez McCorvey was the intended receiver. He slipped. Uh, a lot of things Charlie Ward does back here. You see the hand signals to the receivers. It's signaled into him from the sideline. He passes it along to the offense. And uh, in the last nine quarters, you see how remarkable this kid has performed. A lot of turnovers early. He threw 15 interceptions in the first seven games. And has settled in. It's the fast break offense is just what he likes. Downfield throw. He's got an open man. 
But unable to bring the ball in is Kez McCorvey. Iron Hughes was beaten on the play. Another marker down. It's against Nebraska again, Don. Dropping the pass, it appeared to be Trump. That'll be another first down for the Seminoles. Here's Bill Gross. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. They're calling it on Ed Stewart, the rollout by Florida State. Ward has so much physical capability. It's just, yeah, that, I think that's a very good call. No very question. late hit. Stewart will have had like two steps before he uh, hit into Charlie Ward. So again, aided by a markoff against the Cornhuskers. Florida State has now advanced the ball down close to the 25-yard line of Nebraska. Uh, now Florida State going with a tight end with two running backs. This is one of the most multiple offenses you'll find in college football, Don. It all builds around this man, number 17, is Ward. Throws hard. He's got it down low. And Tamara Vanover is in for the first score. It's awful simple. It's a straight drop back by Ward. Vanover just runs the deep in. Ward throws it perfectly. This young man is just a freshman in college. Dan Mowry booms the extra point up and through. And Tamaric Vanover, the freshman sensation, gives the Seminoles on the reception a 7 to nothing lead. First quarter, Florida State, 7. Freshman Tamara Vanover in the end zone with the first score of the night. A 25-yard touchdown pass played. Charlie Ward delivered the ball right on the numbers. And now Coach Bowden's favorite Seminoles hold a 7-0 lead as they're ready to kick the ball off. Tyrone Hughes and Corey Dixon are back deep. The ball is going to Hughes. This is the fastest Cornhusker with the ball. And Hughes takes it ahead close to the 22-yard line. And here comes Tommy Frazier to try to get the Huskers going. And Don back to the touchdown. Here is the receiver who catches it, but we got double blitz, Tackle and the two safeties two, here Abraham are covering these running backs. What it does is isolate Vanover on the corner at the top of the screen. It's a mismatch, and Charlie Ward, no play action fake, puts it right on the money. As you said, down easy score, 25 yards for Florida State. And that's a punch to the psyche of this Nebraska Whoa. team. Here's a fumble. Alvin Jones falls on his own ball back at the 11. That was the first first quarter touchdown that Nebraska's allowed this season. Dan Footman was Nebraska the guy putting the rush on. I think this is on Frazier. Look how high he throws that ball. The idea is you pitch that exactly ball back to the stomach of the receiver. And uh, there's uh, only a couple three yards between the quarterback and Calvin Jones. You've got to put it in the stomach. That one's on the freshman Tommy Frazier. Second down comes up, and Frazier goes to the run, and Calvin Jones, very quick with good leg power, breaks tackles, gets ahead to the 18-yard line. Now we have a moment. Let's go to Jim Lampley in New York. Jim? All right, Don, it's over in Pasadena as Michigan holds off Washington 38-31. This 88-yard touchdown run by Tyrone Wheatley, the second of his three TDs on the day. All in all, 15 carries, 235 yards for Wheatley. And 30 years after Southern Cal 42 and Wisconsin 37, the Rose Bowl has its most entertaining game in three decades. Don? A lot of points. And we have points early here as Florida State has gone in front 7 to nothing. Now Nebraska's Frazier. Looking to throw on third down, needs 13. Not close. I mean, Frazier trying to go pump a fastball in between some defenders to Trumaine Bell, but he wasn't close to a connection. And now Trump. Good field position could await the Seminoles. Donna, I think I just saw Nebraska in the shotgun. That may be heresy in the Big Eight. What are they doing in the shotgun? My, have has this game changed? Sawyer, back to the problem with the Nebraska style of play, when they get behind and have to go to a pass game, over the years they've not had one. 
Usually, over the years, they started with the lead, build on it, and it got bigger. Here's a long kick downfield to Corey Sawyer. Sawyer looks for a gap and dives out to the 33-yard line. 58-yard punt, an 8-yard return. So a critical defensive play now coming up for Nebraska. They got to stop him. Florida State looking to move the ball again. The last time they had it, they went 75 yards and on ace plays. Charlie Ward to Tamara Vanover on a 25-yard throw for the game's only score. Seven nothing. Seven holes as Ward takes a deep drop and that tries to screen oh. the out. A little low for Sean Jackson. And a penalty marker down again. He's had one of those about every other play. Yeah, well, this is against uh, the offense. They had a, a man downfield. That was a screen set up. If he catches the ball, he's still running. There's no penalty. There's no penalty. Disregard the flag. There. We'll, we'll accept that. Okay, thank you very much. They tried to run a screen, and I'm telling you, if the catch can be made, he could probably run, run down to uh, Coral Gables from here. Travis Hill put a big rush on for Coach Osborne's Huskers. Certain times this year, they've played as well as any team in America. Out in Colorado. Last in Kansas. And the upset loss at Iowa State sets him back. And here's a handoff. Running hard is Sean Jackson. And he's ahead for a first down for Joel Florida Jackson, State. The ball carrier. Tyrone Hughes finally Back got him, but he did it 14 Hughes. yards downfield. Now, Don, let me make you the defensive coordinator of Nebraska. You've seen the Florida State Seminoles in two backs with a tight end and, and two wide receivers, four wide receivers, and now they've got two backs and three wide receivers with a tight end. I mean, first there's just down. no Florida way State. to tell your defense 47. what to do against all this offense. you got to lock them into a defensive two, a coverage of two, here it is. Look at three wide receivers and two running backs. Ward steps in. Down the field throw is picked up. Tyrone Bird running with the ball for Nebraska. The game's first turnover. And Tyrone Bird, the Huskers' free safety, looking like the running back standout he was in high school, and he takes it back. And Nebraska takes over on this first turnover, and they were number one in America in turnover ratio. And that's what Coach Osborne thought had to be the key if they were to upset Florida State. They had to win the turnover count. Uh, I guess this is true of all quarterbacks. you got to get burned a few times before you learn you can't throw it late down the middle. It is an adage that has never changed since they started throwing this football. Charlie Ward breaks that rule and he gets it picked off. And now from Nebraska has to do something with the ball. Here's a pitch back. Running with it is Calvin Jones. And the Seminoles, who have such tremendous speed throughout their roster, that even on their defensive line, these guys run. They get a tremendous push, tremendous impetus coming out of that front seven. So, so far, uh, this offense is not looking good for Nebraska. Uh, Jones and Derek Brown, both 1,000-yard rushers. This team has averaged 328 yards a game coming into this game. They're getting little or nothing running against Florida State. And again, a team that doesn't like to pass is going to be forced into it. Second down and 15. A pitch back to Calvin Jones. He turns it up, turns it ahead, and gets down to the 40-yard line. That'll bring up third down and almost five. Will Shields, the Outland Trophy winner, the tremendous guard, 310 pounds, was the lead blocker. Eric Smith made the stop. Uh, Shields kids, interesting. Uh, you'll see him at right guard. He's right here. He comes out, tries to get Marvin Jones. As again, this is the option, the spin option. Can't quite get a lick on Marvin Jones. It's uh, something he's looking forward to. Hey, Marvin, you bring your best, I'll bring my best. Let's see what happens. Marvin averages 7.2 yards a carry, not tonight. Five carries, a total of seven yards for Calvin Jones. Corey Dixon was the intended receiver. He is their speed receiver, and Corey Sawyer made the stop for Florida State. So that's just again probably doing a five point eight for Terry Evans, but so far the running game has been pretty much shut down and has been again in this series. Yeah, and uh, trailing seven nothing, the downside is they average just over a hundred yards passing a game, and all of their passing is tied to the option stuff. Uh, you you saw Frazier kind of roll out. They've got to threaten the option on every play. That's Corey Sawyer back to return the punt. They think he could be in the Deion Sanders-Terrell Buckley category as both a cornerback and a uh, punt returner. Mike Stiggy 
one of the nation's best. He has a net punting average of almost 42 yards. That one was for just 31, though. And Florida State takes over the ball again with three minutes and 59 seconds to play in the first quarter. And the favorite, Florida State, has taken a 7 to nothing lead. Ball mark. Our overhead shots tonight are from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes based in Papano Beach, Florida. At the controls is Captain Jim Maloney. And Captain Maloney is from Vienna, Virginia. A balmy night in South Florida. Temperature in the mid-70s. Winds gusting up to 10 miles an hour. Nebraska moving into the wind. Didn't bother them that one possession when they went. 75 yards in eight plays. And they lead the game by a 7 nothing count. Nebraska had good field position. Ends around. Tamarik Vanover turns the field. And turns up on the corners. And Tamarik Vanover has a man to beat. And he beats him. One man has a shot at Vanover. The great freshman, 91 yards. He's in the end zone again. Whoa! He stepped out, Don. I think he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, they're spotting the ball back at the 33-yard line. A wasted trip, but it was exciting. Right in front of the Florida State bench. He's making the corner. The next two steps are critical. Oh, his toe looks like it just hit the white part of the floor of the Orange Bowl. So instead of a 91-yard touchdown run on the end around, it becomes a 24-yard run. Here he is right here. Now watch what happens at the bottom of the screen. The defender keeps running down the field. Kenny Wilhite, he doesn't even realize the reverse is coming. That's where he steps out. That off of the 24-yard run is a disappointment. That one was. Now turning wide and not getting far is Sean Jackson. That's a good penetration from outside linebacker Trev Elbert and inside backer Mike Anderson of Nebraska. Well, you suppose that Nebraska's defense now is sitting there saying, and these fellas is quick. These fellas is fast. I'm not sure we got the defense to handle these guys all night long. That could have been a game breaker if that play went. And Tamarik Vanover not stepped out of bounds, but he's a threat to go the distance every down. He's on the field. He's out right now getting a breather. Coming in is Matt Fryer playing the wide open top of your screen. Not nearly the speed with great hands. Gary Ward takes a look. They hand him in. He's looking. He's got nothing, and they get him at the 31-yard line. Well done by the Husker defense, and again, Trev Albert, a quick outside backer. Number 34 was the tackler. And Don, if we could look and see what the defense is here exactly, here are the six defensive backs. One, two, three, four, five, and the sixth is right there. Here's the spy in a four-man front for Nebraska. That's how they're trying to uh, combat this Florida State offense, and they have three wide receivers and two running backs, and it actually works pretty well right here. And that brings up Third down and 12 now. Ward sets in that fast break. And they get him and lose him. Still on the run. You've got to throw a net over this guy. Like Mandrake, he finds his way out of locked rooms, but this time the pass is incomplete. And Sean Jackson, the intended receiver, couldn't hold on. Great defensive stop. It's uh, designed to be a screen. Excellent pressure, pressure coming from the outside. It's Dante Jones that originally flushes him out. Ward stays with the play. And just an incomplete pass. A very big defensive stop, Trump. On the way to that defensive stop, you'll remember a 91-yard touchdown run was called back. Oh, they're going to run the ball. Nebraska's in a complete return. And with ease, running for the first down is Wimberly the punter and there's another penalty marker down they watched Nebraska earlier those down linemen sprinted back to get in blocking formation for the return John Wimberly ran unopposed for 18 yards before they stopped him might you know, be though against the FSU Trump yeah but you know this was not a designed run the ball the punt was almost blocked Wimberly does an excellent job of keeping his head here Hey, the Nebraska guys cleared out, getting back downfield to try to block for their punt returner, Tyrone Hughes. Pippi 
three on the offense. The 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still fourth down. Coward is the guilty party. Uh, 93 Coward is the guy who comes up with the clip. Uh, block in the back, no question about it. So Wimberley has to punt again, and I have a Wimberley feeling this time Nebraska will be making sure that the punter is covered. Well, they're coming with a 10 man rush. Tremendous punt by Wimberley into the wind. Going back is Tyrone Hughes. It takes a Nebraska bounce, starts the other way. And the Seminoles quickly down the ball at about the 19 yard line. A 49 yard punt, and that was into that gusting wind coming out of the north. A wind that could bring rain before this night is over. Sunday be with NBC Sports when we bring you the opening round of the NFL playoffs. Warren Moon and the Houston Oilers travel to Buffalo to take on Thurman Thomas and the Bills in an AFC wild card game. The winner advancing to the divisional playoffs. The loser out for the season. So make NBC Sports your home for the playoffs starting this weekend and going straight, straight through to the Super Bowl. It all starts at 12 noon on Sunday. The NFL Live. And the Oilers and the Bills. Nebraska again tries to run and again Calvin Jones is not quick enough to elude that super fast defensive front of Florida State Sanders on the stop there's the offensive line of Florida State sitting over there they're in certainly in excellent condition running this fast break offense but so far uh, minor misfires just produced seven points for Florida State's offense. It's interesting from Bobby Bowden saying that a, a Southern team has a tremendous advantage in bowl games but from a climate standpoint and the big fan base is here with Florida State. Hard thrown ball taken in by Corey Dixon of Nebraska. Tommy Frazier a very well thrown ball coming in low so the defense couldn't make a play on it. Again, though, you see the, the nice little roll by Frazier just on the side. And I see uh, Marvin Jones on the sideline. Now, I don't think that's out of the ordinary. If Bobby Bowden tries to use 20, 25 guys on his defense, so he just wants to keep Jones fresh. Don, no injury. He does have a little bit of a knee problem, but it's, it was not expected to limit him. I think he just is getting a breather on the sideline as a pitch back goes to Calvin Jones. And Nebraska runs its offense well for a first down on a third down and two play. They break it ahead for a gain of seven. One half of the Weebacks, Calvin Jones, the younger of the two, Derek Brown being the other. Uh, he uh, didn't want to tell us a secret, but he owns a dog. It's a Hungarian something. I don't know what it is. Vishla. All right, thank you very much. But the dog's name is Heisman. He didn't want us to know that. We found out. We paid big money for the information, Brown. He's hoping for that shot at it next year. He's certainly a contender as he runs hard into the Florida State defense. Now Osborne says of his quarterback Tommy Frazier, he's really still learning the business, but he has remarkable poise. And you have to running down the line options against these big hitters from Florida State. Sunday, it's the AFC wild card game, Oilers and Bills tonight. It's the 59th Federal Express Orange Bowl from South Miami. And right now, the rains have come down hard. This was forecast, and it's come to pass, and there could be balls on the field. Rain brings fumbles. Frazier with a great fake, and then he gives to Lance Lewis, who drives straight ahead. He may have lost it. But Nebraska fell on the ball. It's a first down for the Huskers at the 46-yard line of Florida State. 16-yard gain. Lance Lewis is kind of the Nebraska lost guy of the running backs here for Nebraska. Excellent job again up front. Big block by the offensive line. All of them. You can't pick anybody out. But I was going to say Will Shields, but he was one of several big blocks recovered by the center. Jim Scott. Number 51. They say Jim Scott, but he's as good as any center they've ever had at the best. They had some great ones like Dave Remington. There's an Allen Trophy winner. Frazier, reverse pitch. This is Curry Dixon on the run. One of the fastest Huskers breaks it inside the 30, knocked down inside the 20, and Curry Dixon working hard all the way down to the 12-yard line. Some big blocks on the way. 35-yard gain on the play. John Nance, defending for Florida State. Excellent call. You see 
Again, watch this right guard. It's Will Shields. He's going to make a big block. It's the pivot again, and then the reverse pitch, which works beautifully. This is a very aggressive Florida State defense. See if you can pick up 75. Top right portion of the screen. He should appear about now. There's the Outland Trophy winner, 35 yards downfield to make a block. And Chris Zizda also had a big block for the Huskers. As now they have their best challenge of this game, trailing 7-0 early in the second quarter. Frazier jumping over people, pitching back. It might have been picked. That might be Florida State's ball. I think Der Derek Brooks caught it at the same time the running back did. It looks though like they're pointing at Nebraska's football. But Derek Brooks, number 10 there on the ground, no, no, no. he comes back, and I think they both catch it at the same time. Like a tie in favor of the runner. Again, it's the reverse pivot by Frazier. When he jumps up here, it destroys the timing, but watch number 10. I'm not so sure that Derek, Derek Brooks didn't catch that ball, and they give it to the offense. That's a break for Nebraska. Alvin Jones running hard but without much success. Nine carries, just 20 yards. He averages 7-2 a pop during the season. Now Tommy Frazier makes a wise move, not wanting to blow a scoring opportunity. He didn't like the defense, so he wants to go over and check it out with the coaching staff. Seminoles continue to lead 7-0. The Federal Express Orange Bowl is brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. By the Discover Card. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. By Lay's Potato Chips. One taste and you'll cash in your old chips. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? With Bob Trumpy and John Dockery, this is Don Cricky back at the Federal Express Orange Ball in Miami. Florida State on defense leads 7-0. Nebraska with its best challenge. Second down coming up now. Straight ahead power dive. Jones takes the ball down close to the six-yard line. They have another thousand-yard rusher in addition to Calvin Jones and Derek Brown. But I don't think he's been on the field yet, Trump. He no, he's not. Carry. He's got a bad shoulder. There's Derek Brown. He's had very little contact even down here in Miami. Uh, the running game turning around a little bit here now for Nebraska. In the first quarter, they had just 21 yards rushing. In this drive here, they've had 57 on four carries. Third down. Huskers need five. Frazier throws. He's got a man, but they can't make the connection. Calvin Jones was the intended receiver. The ball seemed to be there a bit behind him, perhaps. So the Huskers, who look to have a touchdown, lose it, and now they'll send out the field goal unit. Pressure from Marvin Jones as you look at it uh, very up close. Uh, the roll by Frazier. Marvin Jones should appear right there. Hands up right through the hand of Calvin Jones. He's used to lugging it, not catching it. He's only caught 13 balls all season. Leading receiver for Nebraska only has 14 receptions. Byron Bennett, as you see, 7 of 10 on field goal attempts this year. Rain abates a bit, and he swings it up, and it looks to be good. They're ruling it no good. It's wide left. So Nebraska, down close twice, fails to score both times. Once in a fourth and one, they were stopped. Now in a field goal try, and the Seminoles continue to lead 7 to nothing. Uh, you know, I don't imagine Florida State has any sympathy for any team kicking to that goalpost in this stadium, you know? That's the heartbreak end of the field for the Seminoles. Let's go down to John Dockery. John? And Trump, you're absolutely right. It was on that 29-yard uh, line, left side, looking into the open uh, end of the Orange Bowl, that Florida State missed that field goal wide right. Remember the one two months ago against Miami? They lost 19-16. Their only loss of the year. And just think, had that ball been a couple of yards left, what Florida State might be playing for on this New Year's night. Back to the receiver around again. This is a point. This is Tamaric Vanover running again, and Vanover again breaks it across the 45-yard line. <laughs> and all the way to the 47-yard line. They had a 29-yard gain. It's unusual to run two reverses and have them both produce yards like this, but it's beautifully handy, handled and Vanover does an excellent job here of avoiding a defender. Unbelievable foot speed on this Florida State football team. In fact, Tom Osborne is a little sensitive about it. 
When you talk to him about the speed when he comes down here to play in the Orange Bowl, he says, hey, all coaches recruit speed. We recruit speed. We just can't get them all out of Florida like Florida State does. Eric Hanover has never been a sophomore Heisman Trophy winner. He's going to be a contender next year. Here's a downfield throw to Fryer. And there's an interference call down at the five-yard line. The ball sailed over the head of the intended receiver, Matt Fryer. John Reese, who was beaten on the touchdown play by Vanover earlier, may be guilty of pushing. Ball way underthrown. I think he's saying the ball was overthrown, not catchable. We're going to pick up the flag, Don. There's no foul. The ball was ruled uncatchable. Exactly. Disregard the penalty. The receiver with a nice little move, and here's the contact, and the ball is, it's a good spot. Well, now, wait a minute. That's a lot closer on what, what review. Kind of was that? Yeah, that, that's a lot closer when you look at it the second time. That is certainly limited contact if there was any. But Reese was not looking back with the football, and Fryer was trying to get back to the football. Anyway, no flag. Second down. Charlie Ward has now put the ball up 13 times on passes. Has completed six for 56 yards. One touchdown, one interception. Oh, a throw to Charlie Ward. He's on the run inside the 35, and Charlie Ward is all the way down to the 22-yard line. Alabama used to run that. Notre Dame used to run it. Sean Jackson took the pitch. Threw the ball back to his QB, and the game is 28 yards. So let's see, uh, what haven't we seen here? We've seen two reverses. Now the reverse pass to the quarterback. John Elway made this famous in the NFL. Ward, an excellent runner. We know that. Uh, we haven't seen a quarterback sneak yet from Florida State. I think we've seen just about everything else. They've been the dominant offensive team in this game, but have a 7 to nothing lead. This could be bigger any time. Throw. throw downfield, and Charlie Ward comes in a bit high, and the gusting winds behind him is certainly going to affect the flight of the ball. He was looking at Kez McCorvey. Well done here. Nice fake. Again, Ward showing great maturity. Looks to the right, comes back to the left. Didn't set his feet properly, Don. I'm sure uh, Pat Kennedy, the basketball coach when you shoot you've got to set your feet properly you have his feet set right to make that throw big cheer as Alabama's gone in front of Miami right now Trump was having trouble making connection yeah five straight incompletions <laughs> well thrown ball but Shannon Baker coming off the right flank couldn't hold on it's a wet ball that's coming in the rain is much lighter now than it was but it's still raining they get six straight incompletions. Baker just on the slant. You see the man coverage by Nebraska. And uh, there's Tyrone Hughes, 33. He plays the free safety in the dime. And uh, with, you see the thing on his, he got hit in the ribs. But Shannon Baker on his shin, he has a, an irritation on his shin that has that is really bothered him down here in Miami. He hasn't been able to practice much and, and run two to four. So that's now six consecutive incompletions by quarterback Ward of the Seminoles. He's looking deep again. There he goes. And a tremendous defensive play. John Perella diving at him. The defensive end, number 92. Stopped Charlie Ward from going a long way. Maybe the distance. And boy, Don, they sure had this Nebraska defense separated all over the place. I mean, there's man coverage behind it, and these defensive tackles like Perella got to make desperation dive tackles on the heels of the quarterback. This is uh, Maui's lucky in. He's had a lot of luck. 10 of 18 field goals has he made this season. 40 yard attempt here. He spins it up, looking good all the way. Oh, it yeah. is. Sure. The Seminoles extend their lead to 10 to nothing. Yeah, sure, right. Uh huh. This is no big deal. Yeah, right. We'll be back with the Florida State kickoff in a moment. A 40-yard field goal by Dan Mowry of Florida State has given the Seminoles a 10-0 lead. 10.54 to play in the first half. There's Mowry's kickoff with the wind behind him. He drives into the end zone, and Baron Miles downs the ball. First down and 10, Nebraska with the long field to go from their 20. 
This was after the last series. Tom Osborne congratulating his defense. Good job holding uh, Florida State to just three points. 31 consecutive winning seasons for Tom Osborne at Nebraska. 24 straight years with nine wins or more. Both NCAA records. The winningest percentage among any active NCAA coach, but the Huskers have lost their last five bowl games. Florida State's not lost a bowl game in a decade. 9-0-1, they had a tie in the Citrus Bowl back in 84. Here's a downfield throw as they go to Gadget plays. That was a lateral. <laughs> We've seen it all here. The Sugar Bowl is 3-3. We got all the offense here on the floor of the Orange Bowl at the Federal Express Orange Bowl. It's got to be thrown backwards. But, but this is what Nebraska does to throw the ball. Intended for Vincent Hawkins. Not a bad throw by Tremaine Bell. A little off target, but at least it was spinning. He sets the Huskers with a second and ten. Frazier, oh, Aaron Throw, it's going to be recovered back inside the five-yard line, picked up and taken in. Touchdown, Florida State. Wait a minute, that's not a touchdown. You can't advance a fumble in college football. That goes back to the spot of the fumble, Don. He singled, signal touchdown. He did. Dan Footman is the guy in the recovery, picked it up. Derek Brown couldn't get it, but it's going to come back to the spot of the fumble. No, you can't advance a fumble in college football, Trump. This pitch by Frazier, a very poor choice. Derek Brown, the intended guy to get it. Oh, they're ruling it out. They're going to rule it right at the one-yard line. You can't advance a fumble. You can't advance a fumble in college football unless the ball is in the air. If the ball is in the air, if the ball is in the air, you can advance it. You know, we documented, and Tom Osborne touchdown, and it's going to the two-yard line. That it'll be first and goal from there for Florida State. Yeah, Tom Osborne said one of the greatest things about Tommy Frazier is he has protected the ball. We protected the ball. He's not made bad choices. My question is, Frazier in his home state in front of 40 family members out of Bradenton, he's trying to be the MVP here on one play. Not a good choice, but a true freshman will make plays like that. Very few teams protect the ball as well as Nebraska during one stretch. They went seven and a half games without a, without a fumble. Seven and a half games without losing a fumble. Nebraska led the nation. Plus 18. In the giveaway takeaway. William Floyd with his first carry, a hard running fullback used primarily as a blocker, but he was quickly taken down. So now the ball goes back to the spot. It's back at the uh, two yard line. And it'll be second down and goal for the Seminole. Reverse. Vanover. Fumble. Fumble. Ball on the field. Nebraska has it. Well, John, three times to the well is too much on that reverse. That would have been a lights out score. Up 10 nothing if they went to 17 nothing. That could have been it, but Nebraska stays in the game as the ball is picked up by defensive end John Perella. These are not seen any signal by the officials. Uh, Nebraska's not leaving the field. What's going on here? They're saying Florida State still has the ball. No fumble. Third down. Yeah, we got I a beg lot your of no pardon. calls here, don't we? I beg your pardon? It's a three-yard loss. Tell me how this is not a fumble. Did they stop his forward advancement? No. How's that not a saying, I don't know. This. I guess they're saying his knee down is down, but there's no way. That, that's a fumble. Call goes against the Huskers and floor the Seminoles, and right now a throw to the end zone, and easing on in is Kez McCorvey. Touchdown, Florida State. back up now to try the point after. Oh, hey, go, hey, go, 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 go. Hey, on the 
against you, Don, he was basically uncovered. I mean, down on the goal line, when you see the quarterback just look over there and say, oh, there he is. Look at here. They forgot about him. Look, nobody even close. And, of course, that's after the fumble, non-fumble. Ward again stands tall in that pocket, scans the entire field. He doesn't blow up there when he sees a wide open receiver. He just goes through his fundamentals, gets it to McCorvey for a, an easy score. Took him three plays to go two yards, but they get there. Well, they shouldn't have had the opportunity, in my estimation. Tamari Vanover, no question that is a fumble, but ruled a three yard loss. Florida State keeps the ball and eventually scores. Let's go back down to Doc. Hey, Trump, I just went over and talked to one of the officials, and they told me this was the call on the fumble. They said they called the player down, and they were very emphatic about it. He was down, then the ball came out. Of course, they don't have the uh, benefit of the replay, neither do I, but that was their official ruling when I talked to him a moment ago. Back the, to you. The umpire in the end zone signaled touchdown. They took it off. Now they do score Florida State. It now goes to 17 to nothing. Well, in previous lives, they used to employ a system of replay to uh, correct mistakes like that. But that was in a previous life, Mr. Griggy. Maori steps into the ball again, hits a spinner with a wind behind him. Aaron Miles feels it after five. Miles not done. He's across the 40, running an open field. He's finally taken down out of the 48-yard line of Florida State. Kicker Mowry kind of bent him out of shape there a little bit, helped his teammates uh, make this stop. Back to the touchdown by McCorvey. Here is McCorvey. He's going to run what's called a post corner. Pulls the corner in coverage, and Charlie Ward does an excellent job of looking away and then coming back to it. Just beautifully executed. That's an easy touchdown. Straight ahead. And the ball is taken down to the 32-yard line by Derek Brown, who finally gets a carry with a bad shoulder. What uh, Osborne has done with these two kids is they basically alternated quarters, but I think it's remarkable. You're going to find some football teams who have 2,000-yard rushers like Nebraska does. You're not going to find any team who has 2,000-yard rushers who alternate. They're not in the game at the same time. <laughs> Raise your hands off to Lance Lewis. He takes a hard strike at the 29-yard line. Let's watch Marvin Jones here, Trump, the dominator. He's not a bad guy to watch all day. He just has that sense for where the ball is, runs through the block of Hawkins, 38, throws, throws the fullback to the ground. Uh, th this guy is extraordinary. You name it on defense, he can do it. He told us. Uh, he's thinking about coming out and drafts. He says, I don't care. I'll play for the Alaskan Snow Crabs. I don't care who drafts me. I'll play in the NFL. Well, whoever drafts him, it's going to be high. Number one ready defensive player. If he does come out, the speculation is that he will as Derek Brown runs again. Official ruling on the fumble advancement. If the fumble is behind the line of scrimmage, you cannot advance it. If it's in front of the line of scrimmage, an advanced ball, the defense can advance it. You can't advance fumbles in college football under that uh, scenario as we're now down to seven minutes and 40 seconds to play in the first half. Nebraska needing points badly. Here's Frazier stepping in. Throwing it sidearm. A little wizardry, but to no avail. <laughs> Let's go back down to John Dockery. Uh, thank you, Dunham. With Fred Jones, Marvin's uh, bigger brother. And uh, what kind of a game is little brother having so far? Uh, he's having a decent game right now. Uh, they're putting a couple people on him. So he's making it a little tough for him. Doing a little bit of mixed direction plays. Kind of like hold him up. But overall, he's doing okay. Well, I know you played at Florida State as well. Uh, was there any way that little brother Marvin was not going to go to Florida State? No, uh, I kind of like doubt it. Because <laughs> when I was getting recruited, he was right there in the living room watching everything. And... In the summertime, he used to come up and spend weeks with me at a time, so he, he got, he grew kind of um, used to it. All right, well, thank you, and good luck to you now. All right, thank you. Fred Jones, a member of the Dade County Police Department, Marvin's brother. Hey, 
Fourth down and eight for Nebraska. First drop, they had their kicking team out, their punt team, but now they send quarterback Tommy Frazier and the offense back out. So they're going for it in the rain and in the wind on fourth down, needing eight. All position just inside the 30-yard line of Florida State. Frazier from the shotgun, throws downfield and makes a perfect throw. Vincent Hawkins on his knees takes in the ball at the 17-yard line. A 12-yard gain and a Husker first down. That would have been a 46-yard field goal attempt into the win. Excellent pass protection by this very gifted offensive line. You see Marvin Jones move out of the picture. He's reading the eyes of the quarterback, Tommy Frazier. Zone coverage. Safety's way off. 12-yard pickup. Fourth down conversion. So the Huskers looking to get points before halftime. Still a lot of time left. Here's a pitch. Derek Brown loses it, falls on it. Lost yardage, but the Huskers keep the ball. Well, that's tough, too, because that's such a big part of their offense. Running that option. Frazier has got to be very accurate with that pitch. The uh, option off the inline on the line of scrimmage, and I'll put that one on Brown. That pitch was a good pitch by Tommy Frazier. Brown should have caught it as he comes out of the game. Six minutes and 27 seconds to go in the half now. Clock running, second down and 15 coming up. Jones and Brown tumbled only twice all season for Nebraska. They were six full games without any turnovers at all. Seven and a half without a fumble loss. Frazier looked like they were trying to set some kind of a screen, but Florida State just crashed apart the blocking scheme. Not close to a game. Blitz coming by Florida State. Ball was intended for Calvin Jones, the one of the two eye backs. And you're right, Frazier couldn't get the ball to him cleanly. Now watch the blitz coming from both ends. Lots of pressure there. He's got to throw it by everybody. Probably a good choice on Frazier's part. Frazier, three of eight, throwing the ball for 37 yards. Hands in, go to the end zone, and he will hit nothing at all. Let's see, do they, do they go again on, on fourth and 15? Apparently not. And 15 from the 22. Byron Bennett, their place kicker, comes out. Missed his first attempt. This is a heavy load for Byron right now. He's going to be kicking into that gusting wind. The flag is almost straight out. And the open end of the Orange Bowl, the north end of the stadium. The 39-yard attempt. He's got to hit it hard to get it up into this wind. He hits it hard. But why? I guess the Miami Hurricanes own that goalpost. There's just no other way to look at it. Coach Baden talking about practicing at the University of Miami. He said, they do have funny goalposts here. They all lean over to the right. <laughs> well, it's, there's absolutely no sympathy as the Florida State offense again takes the field. Let's go back down to the dock. You know, Craig, there's an important, uh, I just got a report, an injury. Van Over went into the locker room. Slight separation of his left shoulder. Status uncertain. We'll keep you up to date on it, but that could hurt Florida State's offense enormously. Yeah, who's going to run that reverse for Florida State? Florida State. Not. Florida State. And over and Ward, both are going to be legitimate Heisman Trophy candidates. Two guys from the same team next season. And that's straight up the middle. Sean Jackson running hard. Breaks it ahead on a first down carry for a gain of eight yards. Taken down by the strong safety, Steve Carmer. Now again, a, a, an entirely different mindset for the Florida State offense. They come with two running backs, a big fullback, in Floyd Jackson behind him and they run just the I formation this is the oh, offense that Bobby Jones. Bowden used to oh, run yeah. when he had Marion Butts here yeah. when he had Sammy Smith here I mean a lot of great running backs right out of that I back Amp Lee Amp Lee <laughs> Dexter Carter they can match in waves all of them track athletes again Sean Jackson very nice ball handling by Charlie Ward Made the drop like he still had the ball, held the defense, and Jackson broke off another good gainer for first down. Number one, baby, number one, all day long. Here's the guy who has been uh, designated as the kind of spy, but with the two running backs in there, David White's got to make some tackles. Uh, his uh, father works for an oil company, and his family presently lives in Jakarta, Indonesia. That's a long home trip home, isn't it? A real long trip home. 
made the long trip to Tokyo when they played Kansas right over there. Valley Ward on the run, and he is across the 40 on a first and 10 play. Way back in the pass drop, he sprints ahead and gains about three yards. Be second down and seven. Uh, I would imagine uh, the only one that doesn't like to see Charlie Ward, the quarterback here, run and get himself bruised and uh, maybe broken is Pat Kennedy, the Florida State basketball coach, because uh, tomorrow night, Charlie Ward is going to be on the bench for the Florida State Seminoles. They play Florida, but now he is the proud possession of one Bobby Bowden, and Bobby's going to use him any way he wants. Thank you. He'll be playing January 6th. That'll be his first game in basketball. We go against Virginia. Downfield throw. Beautifully down. This is Shannon Baker on the run. He's inside the 40 and down to the 37 yard line. And a penalty marker's down. Might have had that face mask again. Steve, Steve Carmer, the strong safety, I think, gets the face mask. The man in coverage, John Reese, number six for Nebraska, has been uh, taking advantage of a little bit here tonight. Yeah, they spotted that number early. Nice little out and watch the move. Very nice move there by Baker up the field. Let's see if we can see the face mask. Yes, no question whatsoever. Bobby Bowden talking about the advantage a Southern team has. Tom Osborne said some year he'd like to play Duluth in a bowl game. So we'd be <laughs> the team the Wisconsin Green Bay. I'm not going to Duluth with you to do that bowl. You're on your own, pal. Fast break. Shotgun set. Ward steps up and runs out of bounds inside the 33 yard line. Charlie Ward's dad, Charlie Ward Sr., was a standout football player for the Rattlers of Florida AM, and a very fine high school coach in Georgia. He's from Thomasville, Georgia. His dad grades out every one of his plays. Even now, he grew up a coach's son and plays like one. He really knows the game. Yes, he does. You know, the impact this kid has had on the. Uh, ACC, uh, the conference that Florida State now plays football in, he was a right in most valuable player winner in the conference this year. Bobby Bowden says about it, don't you want to describe it? It's wonderful. On the field, off the field, he's a vice president of the student body, a top student, and one of the greatest college athletes in America. Basketball and football might be a free play. Bobby lets it fly, going for the ball, looks like a catch. Coming down with the ball was Omar Ellison. If they're going to bring it back. Where do they get all these guys? Now they're ruling. The play's going to go, apparently. Penalty marker was down at the line of scrimmage. Flag is down. It's off ties against the defense. Off ties on the defense is declined. It goes. Yeah, why not? Top of the screen. Again, it's man coverage. You also see the guy off sides. Well done here. Coming back with the football. You know, we could spend the entire night talking about Charlie Ward. Uh, Bobby Bowden has said, you know, when Charlie Ward graduates, we're all going to have to go back to coaching. Is that right? Yes, he did. It's not hard to be a Charlie Ward fan after you meet with him for a while. All right, good kid. Nicknamed Choir Boy by his teammates. He uh, wears 17. In football, in his basketball number is number 12. He wears on a necklace. Ward throws towards the end zone. It skips in in front of the intended receiver, Shannon Baker. Intended for Shannon Baker. As Ward gets up, his uh, football hero, by the way, is Randall Cunningham. And the other night, he got to meet his basketball hero. The uh, security guards for Florida State here at the Federal Express Orange Bowl got a hold of the, the security guards of the Chicago Bulls. And Michael Jordan and Charlie Ward sat down and had a conversation after the Miami Heat game. He is a point guard for Florida State. He doesn't wear 12 in football. That number belongs to Matt Pryor, one of his receivers. Here's a throw and a drop. Down at the two-yard line. On the crossing pattern coming out of the backfield was the fullback, William Floyd. Florida State just doesn't seem to have the intensity. Uh, up 17 to nothing. Just the little things going wrong here. There were two receivers there, Baker and Floyd. Floyd's normally the guy who runs it for a yard or two for the touchdown. But he makes it look easy, doesn't he? Here it does. And the Seminoles are in command, 17 to nothing. An extended drive for Florida State. 
Eight plays, 70 yards. Seminoles challenging again already with a commanding 17 to nothing lead. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy and John Dockery at the Federal Express Orange Ball. Third and goal. Plus for Charlie Ward running this time. Averages five yards a rush when he runs. Loses the ball, gets it himself. Charlie Ward does great things. He throws towards the end zone and almost makes the connection for a touchdown to Omar Ellison. Ward fumbles. You don't have him down, Trump. You knock him down and sit on him. Yeah, he's, he's so gifted an athlete, you just can't imagine what it takes. Miles was the man in coverage. Uh, he has such presence. That's the thing I like about Charlie Ward. You know, when this season started, Florida State had no idea what they had in Charlie Ward. They were looking for a quarterback. And in the first part of the season, they tried the play action passing, didn't work. And when they got to the shotgun, they discovered what a uh, what a an uncut gem they had. And Dan Mowry ready to try a field goal try from 24 yards out. Yeah, all those people in town. Sure, right. Uh huh. Yeah, he makes two field goals in this end. Florida State doesn't duck anybody. Next year, they're out of conference games. Will be against Miami, Florida, Notre Dame. They open a home and home series with Notre Dame, a two-year series. They'll play at South Bend next November. High overhead tonight is the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes. It was 1960 when the Goodyear Blimps made their national television debut. It was right here at the Orange Bowl. You know, uh, speaking of Bobby Bowden, Florida State University, in the last six seasons, they've lost eight games. They've lost five to Miami, one to Florida. The only other losses are to Southern Mississippi and Clemson. This guy's trying to be the number one, uh, have the number one team in the country. That he can't even have the number one team in the state. That's a good football at the collegiate level in Florida is. Hey, Trump, one of the one of the Florida State coaches I was talking before the game, Chuck Amato, defensive coach, was saying if Florida, Miami, and Florida State never played each other, some year they'd all go undefeated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they, these three teams produce so many football players for the NFL, it, it's, it's scary when you sit down and think and look at the NFL roster. High spinning kick by Maori. Aaron Miles at the eight yard line. Looks for the gap and finds one and he advances the ball out to the 36 yard line, then loses it. One critical development with the replay show without question that Charlie Ward fumbled the ball on a rollout. They called it no fumble, and subsequently they scored a touchdown. Well, here they're going to rule the same thing. No fumble, down by contact. Nebraska maintains the ball. 2.24 to go, down 20 to nothing. First down for Nebraska. From Knee there, down, the ball out. Good call by the officials. Razor. A tough throw, rolling left, throwing right. Yeah, and you see, I, that's certainly a, a, a product of uh, this kind of offense as you look at the Bowl Day Blues here for Nebraska. The last uh, four bowls they played in, they've lost by a combined total of 90 points. 90 points. This is not good. This is not good. Well, I asked Tom Osborne about how he feels about it, and there was a lot of criticism, despite having that great winning percentage about the bowl game. Misfortunes, and he said, well, a lot has to do with who we're playing. Yes. Yes. Played Miami a couple times down here, so you try that one out. Frazier oh. pulls up. And as is so often the case, he who hesitates is lost back at the 35-yard line. Clifton Abraham and LaVon Brown got him. Frazier's not had a good half. Three of ten, just 39 yards. Of course, they only average 100 yards passing. He looked at the sideline to see where the marker was to see if he could throw it. He was going to hesitate there and throw the ball down the field, but Mr. Abraham said, no, no, you're going to stop right here. Osborne, when asked about his consistent running game and lack of a pass offense, says, well, we play. This is how you win. We're quick to get it. We do best to win. So it's not easy to throw the ball in the big eight. Late in the season when the weather turns bad. Now 
Frazier. There's now what a throw. Hit Corey Dixon down to the 45 yard line. That's the best throw of the night. 19 yarder right on target. Yeah, 126 to go, trailing 20 to nothing, and they don't have a straight drop back pass. It's a slight roll. Dixon is the inside receiver, gets by the bump. Well thrown by Frazier, his fourth completion of the half. But Florida State's more than happy to let him do that. First down from the Seminoles, 25. Pitch back. Running hard is Calvin Jones, and Jones is going to be taken out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. And that stops the clock with 1.13 to play in the first half. Don, you were mentioning Tom Osborne, and uh, he's taken a lot of heat for the athletes he has and has not gotten. And he said, look, the state of Nebraska is a million and a half people. We came down here to play That's the Orange Bowl, and I mean, they got phone books here that only part of Miami is a million and a half people. So we don't have the people to draw from that they have down here. And that's one of the reasons Florida turns out so many great players is a huge population base. Good weather is a year round sport at a lot of schools. Downfield, Corey Dixon. He takes it in. Nebraska's on the board. Thank you so very much, says Corey Dixon. Uh, opportune bounce of the ball on a 41 yard touchdown pass play. They played yours and mine with it, Don. <laughs> So it's 20 to 6. Corey Sawyer, one of the DBs, had a hand on the ball. And Corey Dixon ended up with it for Nebraska. Back and forth, back and forth. Like a tennis match, Dixon ends up with it. Six points. Yes, sir. Four catches now, 86 yards. And a touchdown. A bow to the crowd. Isn't that what they used to tell you, Trump? Look it into your hands. Look it into somebody's hands, hopefully yours. Extra point is driven up and through by Byron Bennett. And so with 103 to play in the first half, Nebraska cuts into the Florida State lead and now trails by 13 points. Five plays, 63 yards in a minute and a half. Watch this pattern. The out and up. And unfortunately, the defensive back, Corey Sawyer, bites. The ball hangs up. Sawyer's hands off the helmet, off the shoulder pads. Uh, touched about everything you can touch down there and it ends up for a touchdown. Thank you very much. These are excellent corners that Florida State has also. Corey Sawyer and Clifton Abraham. And Corey Dixon on the board for Nebraska. Bobby Bowden said they're as good as any pair we've ever had. You've got to consider he's had guys like Buckley and Sanders. Hey, the hard, baby. Hey, the hard. Well, we're not be celebrating too much just yet. No. Uh, Dr. Tom Osborne doesn't care for that. Tommy Frazier, a touchdown throw in the Orange Bowl. Vanover Trump is not on the field to return the kickoff. A slight shoulder separation for the freshman sensation. And now Tiger McMillan is back to return the kick for Florida State. There's Tiger. Got to the room of Sam. A little Tiger thank you is quite fond of. And got the nickname Tiger long ago. Yeah. Takes a full stick. That's back, back downstairs now to John Dockery, Doc. Crick, you were talking about pretty good cornerbacks. How about this man, Terrell Buckley? Not a bad one. Terrell, what is it with FSU and uh, defensive backs? I think it's an attitude along with the coach, uh, Coach Mick Andrews, thrives on us being great. Tough year for you. You came all that way at Green Bay and you don't make the playoffs. Let me ask you, who do you like in the AFC to go all the way to the Super Bowl? I like the Houston. Houston. Houston's playing Buffalo, you know, up in Buffalo. It could be a weather thing. You think they can beat Buffalo? I think so because it's a momentum thing, and right now Houston has the momentum. What about in the other side? What about the NFC? Who do you like to go to the Super Bowl? It's out of two teams, Minnesota and San Francisco. Minnesota has the momentum right now, and San Francisco is San Francisco. All right, we appreciate it. Good luck to you now. All right. All right. Well put. Terrell Buckley, the winner of the Thorpe Award last year. Now football's best defensive back. Coach Bowden let his guys go out and have some funny at a 1 a.m. curfew earlier in the week. They said everybody in by 1 a.m. though. He said, ain't much that happens after 1 a.m. that's good. That's right. He's uh, now very proud of his son Terry who uh, got the head coaching job at Auburn. Now he's got to not only recruit against Dennis Erickson in Miami and uh, now he's got to recruit against his son at Auburn. Breaking the run is Tiger McMillan out to the 25-yard line. That could do it for the first half of play here at the 
Federal Light Express Orange Orleans. Ball. As the favorite stands tall at halftime, Florida State, champion of the ACC, leading Big A champion Nebraska, 20 to 7. Now let's go back down to Doc. Bobby, a, a moment, if you would. Um, what about the first half? Weather didn't bother you at all? No, the weather uh, it's not that bad. It did get some rain, but I don't think it's having any effect on the game. Well, what about the first half? Then you seem to move the ball at times on spurts and offense, but you couldn't put them away. It's 20 to seven. Well, that's true. We've uh, we, we've done pretty well as far as scoring is concerned, but they can come back and beat us. We're going to have to execute better, and we're going to have to put some points on the board. What about Vanover? Vanover got hurt a little bit. I don't know how much. Went into the dressing room. I got to find out. What does that do to your offense if you don't have him for the second half? Well, it takes away a home run hitter, as you just saw, because uh, uh, you, you saw his potential of breaking the game. Thank you, Bobby. Good luck. And now we're going to go to Jim Lampley in New York for the Prudential Halftime Report. Florida State 20, Nebraska 7 at halftime of the Federal Express Orange Bowl. And Happy New Year once again from Don Tricky and Bob Trump. The interesting first half, some very big plays in this game. And also a very good job, Trump, by the Florida State defense stopping the power run game of Nebraska, holding their top backs to just 2.6 yards a carry. That's absolutely amazing. Uh, they averaged 6.6 .6 yards a carry. The two of them, uh, Jones and Derek Brown, for the season, 2-6 in his first half. It's not worked. Uh, ne Nebraska relies on the running game. They couldn't get it done. Florida State, we saw what we expected we'd see. First score of the game, Tamarik Vanover, the sensational freshman, ran a post pattern, beat John Reese. This was from 25 yards out, and Florida State went in front at this point, seven to nothing. Later, Nebraska would score in a most sensational play. Tommy Frazier, their freshman quarterback, drops back, takes a deep look. Now he's throwing into the wind at the north end of the stadium, lofts the ball high. Cornerback Corey Sawyer, Florida State, goes up, tips the ball. But it comes down in the hands of Corey Dixon of Nebraska. And the Huskers were on the board. It's interesting what Bobby Bowden had at halftime. He said, these guys can go back and beat us. Let's see what the head coach, Tom Osborne of Nebraska, thinks as he talked with John Dockery. Thank you, Don Cricket. Coach, uh, the touchdown before the half, what did it do for your team? Well, I think that we played maybe a little score at NK. We gave him a cheap touchdown, and we missed a couple field goals. And uh, we feel maybe the score could be 17-13 right now, pretty close. So we just got to turn it up a notch, take a little better care of the ball, execute better. We made a lot of mistakes. Florida State has a good team, but I think you'll see us play awful hard in the second half. Was there anything specific on the field goals, or did he just miss them? I don't know. Uh, those things are, those things just happen, and uh, we're, we feel bad. About it. I'm sure that nobody feels worse than the kicker, but we'll we'll come back and do all right. Any specific adjustments for the second half? Well, we've, we've talked about a few things, but the main thing is execution. We've had some plays that have been there, haven't executed quite like we need to, particularly on the options. Okay, thank you, Coach. Good okay, luck. John. Okay, Doc. Once again, Nebraska finding itself in the dilemma they are in so often when they come to the big bowl games. Down in a pass situation without a great pass offense. And now a word from Federal Express. On behalf of our 90,000 Federal Express employees worldwide, we're extremely pleased to once again be part of the Federal Express Orange Bowl. Miami serves as the gateway for Federal Express to all Latin American cities, and we're proud to be part of this great city and its continuing growth. Our Federal Express family extends our warmest wishes for a happy and healthy new year, and we thank you for your business. Now let's break down a quick scoring summary. First quarter score to Mar Vanover, 25-yard reception, 7-0 Seminoles. Dan Mowry hit a 40-yard field goal in the second quarter. The Knolls extended their lead at this point to 10 to nothing. Not long after it was 17-0, Kez McCorvey on a four-yard touchdown reception. And then Mowry hit another field goal to extend the Florida State lead to 20 to nothing. Corey Dixon with that juggling act in the end zone finally got Nebraska on the board in the second quarter late in the second quarter with a minute and a half to play and Nebraska now trails at halftime 20 to 7 as a driving rain falls on the Orange Bowl it was warm and sunny most of the day rain was forecast and Trump rain rolled in 
Yeah, and of course, for Nebraska to get back in this football game now, they got to do something that they're not used to, and that's throw the ball. For Charlie Ward, uh, he's not had a great half, but the, the scoring for Florida State in the first half has looked so easy. It's looked so difficult for Nebraska. The turnover count is even one each way. There's probably going to be more, though, in the second half because this is now a torrent of rain falling. It's like a car wash here at the Orange Bowl. At halftime numbers, you can see the first downs in favor of Florida State, total yards in favor of Florida State. And there's one big play that happened in that first half that uh, fumble, which was ruled a non fumble by Charlie Ward, resulted in a touchdown for Florida State. Could have made the game awful close, Don. There's no question. As you pointed out, Trump, it was indeed a fumble, but it wasn't called one, and Florida State subsequently scored it. Would if not for that touchdown, be a 13 to 7 game. But a lot of strange things could happen in the second half because it can't rain harder than this. The kickoff downfield. Every kick will be an adventure from now on as Tiger McMillan runs it back. You do well to protect the ball with both arms. It'll be on the field shortly. <laughs> And here comes the Cornhusker offense out. Eric Brown on the sidelines. And you see Nebraska averaging just 3.5 yards a rush. They averaged just under six yards a run through the season. And their top runners averaged over seven yards a carry. Return of 18 yards. Uh, wind, the booth yes. <laughs> wind is starting to blow the rain here a little bit sideways, Don. It cannot rain harder than this. It'll pass. Nothing stays around here weather-wise very long. And up and running hard is Calvin Jones. He takes it on a power slant left and gets the ball across the 25-yard line. Eric Brooks brought him down. Uh, is this what they describe as sheets of rain? I tell you, this is, uh, this is an adventure now. Every step of the way from now on is an odyssey. Very rarely, Trump, in our... Career together, have we seen it rain sideways? But it's doing that now. Actually, I think we just had one rain up. It is, man, it's unbelievable the rain. Let's go down to Doc if he's still uh, out of water. <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm almost drowned, but I'm hanging in there. But remember, um, Trump and Crick, when we talked to both coaches, they both wanted to drive field. Osborne said for his running uh, machine, he wanted to drive field. But it was really Bobby Bowden who said, hey, the one thing I don't want is torrential rains, which would change the flight of the ball. It would really affect our offense. So this is rain that will affect both offenses big time. Turnover is a major problem. Doc, you get an award for hanging in down there. Rolling now and handing off and coming back the other way for Nebraska is Calvin Jones as he takes the ball to the 30-yard line, and that brings up fourth down. Hodrick McIntosh, nose tackle, made the stop for Florida State. Tell you one thing, you, you're a punt returner. I think you, uh, you do anything but go near the football. Let it bounce. No question about it. And it... Uh, even the uh, punt snap down is a big adventure. Stiggy is going back. He's a uh, two-time GTE Academic All-American in veterinary medicine. Yeah, he just got an $18,000 scholarship grant from the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame is a fair catch and signal for. That's the, what a great punt. Boom downfield all the way down to the 15 yard line. Corey Sawyer doing his best. I'm going to catch it. Act and letting the ball fly overhead though. And it turns out to be a 56 yard punt. So again now Charlie Ward uh, and the coaches from Florida State have uh, several different choices as to offense. I would think this would be the conservative uh, approach. Run the ball. Uh, Floyd is in the game. I think I, I do see Floyd in the game. Uh, let's see who else is in there running, running back. Or else got Sean Jackson in there. So Florida State can be very conservative here with this 27 lead. 20 to 7 is the count. Hanover's back on the field. That's good news for the Seminoles as they go to the run on first down. Nebraska forces the play. Sean Jackson ran the ball and Keneally comes up on the stop. Along with Anderson, Mike Anderson, an inside linebacker. Well, I guess if you're Florida State, 
Uh, you don't like weather like this. Nebraska, they're thinking, well, if we're in Lincoln, it's snowing so hard we can't even see our feet. So this isn't bad. Nice and warm. You know, a little pleasant shower. It'll pass. No big deal. A natural grass field. And this is the first time all year long that Nebraska's played on a natural grass field. That's quickly a turf league. Artificial turf in the Big Eight. William Floyd runs the ball, and he is stopped at about the 21-yard line. Game clock 11.48 to play early in the third quarter. Florida State after building a 20 to nothing lead. Now leads 20 to 7. Uh, Don, for the rest of this game now, the most important factor is field position. Forget what you can and can't do. Protect the football, protect your punter, and play field position for the remaining half of this uh, Florida Express Orange Bowl 1993. That's Federal Express Orange Bowl 1993. It is indeed, and it is also a third down and four for the Seminoles. Charlie Ward living dangerously, looking to put it up in the rain. He dumps it off to Sean Jackson. Nicely done play by the Seminoles. And Jackson gets ahead to the 35-yard line for a first down. Farmer, the strong safety, comes up and nails him. 14-yard gain. Uh, Charlie Ward, a very good choice here. He's looking downfield. He does not want a chance. He almost put this with, puts this one to the running back. He doesn't really throw it as much as he just, just kind of stretches it over uh, the arm. Sean Jackson with the reception. Big hit by Carmer, the strong safety. The Nebraska player shaken up and one of the very best, Travis Hill, their All-American outside linebacker down. And that's half the clock with 11.01 to play. Cornhuskers lost only two games this year, one to the University of Washington. And then the upset at Iowa State. There's Travis Hill, 93, right in the uh, edge of the. Oh, he's hit by his own man. He's hit by John Perella, number 92, his own man. But Travis is up, and he runs off the field. He'll be back. Now the rain is dissipating slightly. It's still a heavy That's rain. Good. It's not the fire hose we had coming in a little bit earlier. This uh, field does drain and drain very well, Don. So if it can stop raining, they can get back to their normal game plan. Hit behind the line. Sean Jackson took the ball for the Seminoles, and Nebraska was reading run and Jackson all the way. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy and John Dockery at the 1993 Federal Express Orange Bowl, where the superpower from the ACC Florida State is holding to a 20 to 7 lead over Nebraska. The Seminoles build a 20 to nothing lead. Nebraska scored late in the second quarter on a 41 yard pass play. And now, as torrents of rain continue to pelt the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida State operates on offense. Second down arises. They need about 11. And they go to the shotgun. Charlie Ward, their sensational junior quarterback, throws down the field and somehow finds his man against the rush. Shannon Baker, curl in pattern, and he holds on in the rain. Fourth pass complete to Shannon Baker. Those Florida State players on the side are looking for folks. Again, Charlie Ward stands very tall in the pocket. Baker just with a little curl in pattern. He's able to uh, make the connection. John Reese is the uh, was the defender in coverage. He's been picked on quite a bit today. Shannon Baker with the reception. They've been calling his number up. Shannon Baker sure handed and now Kamarik Vanover to fight the slight shoulder separation. The extraordinary freshman player is trying to the top of the ball. Great fake, and then uh, Charlie Ward did lose it, picked it up, and shot ahead to the 50-yard line. On a third and three, he gets a first down. Season almost looks like the uh, fumble ruski that Nebraska's run here. Uh, the snap from center. Oh, we got a man down, too. It looks like it uh, might be one of the offensive linemen. Mitchell, Petra, Patrick McNeil is down. Watch when this ball hits the ground, the uh, presence that Charlie Ward has. Comes right back up through the line of scrimmage. Nice first down pickup. Drive stays alive for Florida State. So while Patrick McNeil is attended to, there's a timeout on the field. The Federal Express Orange Bowl is brought to you by Federal Express. For documents, packages, and freight worldwide, our most important package is yours. By Diet Coke, as a reminder to taste it all in 93. By GTE. 
and by Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of Lincoln luxury automobiles. Rain continues to come down in torrents. First down. Who <laughs> cares when you have his plan, right? Yeah. You can pick the guys out of the Midwest, can't you? Down here in Miami to see the uh, Federal Express Orange Bowl. First down and 10 now for Florida State. Pitch back. John Jackson. Turns the corner, turns it up and is knocked out of bounds. As, as a penalty marker comes in, maybe late hit. Uh, Steve Carmer came across and made the stop on Jackson. Steve Harbor and Face mask against Nebraska. Uh, Don, this is no great eight. scoop, but I'll say this anyway. With this field, you got to go traps, you got to go leads, you got to go powers up the field. You're, you can't be thinking to the sideline here. Rain letting up somewhat, but still coming and down. The face mask by the defense. Five yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. See if we can pick up at the end of the run. 31 is Carmer, the strong safety, the stiff arm by Jackson. And then it looks like Carmer's left hand, although I can't really pick it up exactly where the hand is on the face mask. But there was an official standing right there. Straight ahead to the fullback, William Floyd of Florida State. He's quickly taken down by Mike Anderson with 8.45 to play in the third quarter. 20 to 7 is the score. Florida State coming in, maybe a field goal away from being number one in the country. You remember that missed field goal in this stadium earlier in the season against the University of Miami? And the Canes prevailed that day 19 to 16. That is Florida State's only defeat of this year. They've not lost a bowl game in a decade. They're 9 0 oh, 1 over the last 10 years. Nine victories in a tie against Georgia in the 84 Citrus Bowl. Florida State now done uh, alternating tight ends bringing the plays into Charlie Ward. Pitch back to Jackson. Well done by Seminoles as Jackson turns it inside the 35 yard line and down to the 34. A lob pitch. Perfect lead to Sean Jackson. First down. Yeah, very nice pitch. You see that uh, Jackson does an excellent job here of avoiding the first guy, gets his shoulder square upfield into the defensive backfield, forces the uh, defensive backs to make the tackle. Jackson from New Orleans. A lot of great players coming out of his high school, St. Augustine. Five players in this game from that high school. Lob pass. Ruled out of bounds. McCorvey, a rangy wide receiver, made the play but ruled that he did not have one foot in bounds. You only need one foot in bounds in college football. Russell, well, he doesn't quite have possession yet. Uh, hard to tell. You're looking at his back, yeah, but he, he at least sensed where the sideline was and made the attempt to get his feet in. The deluge has abated somewhat. And the field is, as you point out, Trump, in surprisingly good condition. This is prescription athletic turf at the natural grass field, but it can rain with the suction system. Six inches of rain an hour. Here's an all-out blitz, and Charlie Ward eludes it. Steps up and runs ahead, and when it seemed he was lost for a five-yard loss, he gets ahead and gains eight Time yards on the play. That's the great value of a guy like Charlie Ward, uh, as opposed to uh, using a hot receiver in a blitz. He just runs the ball almost on a quarterback draw. Eventually, Tyrone Bird makes the tackle here, number eight for Nebraska, but again, a nice pickup. Actually, considering the weather when this drive started, Florida State's done a pretty good job here at the beginning of the second half. Yes, they have. Good ball control. This is what they call the fast break offense, a basic shotgun. Ward swings it out, gets a nice lead on it again, and Jackson spins ahead for some yards on a third down and four play. He's very close to a first down, seems to have him. We're going to make the spot. Excellent catch by Jackson. Uh, until yesterday, we thought that the Tiger, Tiger, Tiger McMillan was going to be the starter, but obviously in practice, uh, Jackson had impressed the coaching staff. Again, the outlet receiver, not thrown particularly well by Charlie Ward, but it serves the function. Get it out there in somebody else's hands. A nice move. Missed tackle by 
Toby Wright. And a first down pickup. Coach Bowden said they're going to have to change the way they play defense to contain Charlie Ward. All our blitzes are going to burn him, and they've been using blitzes. And Ward is so quick. He eludes the blitzer and the pass rush, and he just takes it ahead on his own, weaving his way through tacklers. Tom Osborne said, matter of fact, he said if they ran this offense the entire season, Charlie Ward has to be the highest winner with the numbers he put up over the three yeah. games they used it. You saw 96, White, David White, he's the spy for the quarterback. And all Charlie's got to do is get by him or get even with him, and he can outrun him. Tyre eventually, uh, with a good block there to spring at Charlie Ward through the line of scrimmage, but White's got a big assignment covering Charlie Ward as that spy in his Nebraska defense. Power run to Sean Jackson, who's getting a load of work tonight for the Knowles, and he takes it close to the 10-yard line. And and as we mentioned, here's David White, the uh, linebacker. He's listed at 250, but in fact only weighs about 225 or 230. 44 Floyd gets a good pop on him, and he's a no factor on the tackle. John Jackson's now run the ball nine times. He's gained 42 yards. That's Perry for a first down. Extended drive you talked about, Trump. This is the 15th play coming up. Nice play pick. Takes the pitch. Or throws. He comes in high. Incomplete. That was intended for McCorby. A nice little half roll again there. They're trying to pick on Reese. McCorby's already caught one over Reese tonight. Bobby Bowden talking about his bowl success. He said there's not many upsets in bowl games. When you get good teams, he said, you usually win because you have the better football team. Yeah, and, and in the case of these two football teams, it's all the different things that Florida State can do offensively, and it's the, the, the little things that Nebraska can't do. Look at that drive. Very impressive in the middle of a rainstorm. Here's the guy set. I bat, runs it through, and runs it in. That's Sean Jackson. Touchdown, Florida State. Ten yards. A tremendous drive that started in a pouring rain. Ended with the rain almost stopped. Play after play, they keep mixing the calls. A lot of power runs. 85 yards. Seven minutes and 48 seconds. 16 plays. And whatever the halftime speech was that Tom Osborne gave his team, they've forgotten it by now because Florida State's been on the field for so long. Now Dan Mowry tries the point after, and he hits it. And with 4.52 to go in the third quarter, Florida State has moved to a commanding advantage, 27 to 7. Uh, Don, when you watch this play, watch the way Jackson breaks away from the blocking. Nice move outside. And then when he gets his shoulders turned up, he's looking to take a prisoner here and there, and it happens to be Reese that gets in his way. A uh, nice bull run by Jackson, who's had a very good game so far tonight. Very consistent, and he protects the ball, which is not easy to do in this weather. Florida State builds on its lead, a 27 halftime advantage, now 27 to 7 after an extended 85 play drive, or 85 yard drive. Here is the kickoff into the end zone by Dan Mowry. And Tyrone Hughes cannot bring it out. There's the man in the middle, number 35, Sean Jackson, who's outrushed the Nebraska team. The Cornhuskers of Nebraska looking for big play offense. Ready to start a drive now at their 20-yard line after an 85-yard drive for a score by Florida State. One of the Huskers' best players, outside linebacker Travis Hill, a consensus All-American, going off the field with an apparent knee injury. So it doesn't look like Travis will be back on the field tonight. Great fake by Tommy Frazier, and he lets it rip long. Corey Dixon's going for it, and it's picked off. Down with the ball. There's Leon Fowler. He's knocked down to the 34-yard line. There's also a penalty marker down where Fowler made the interception. We'll see if there's any pass interference. Actually, you know, uh, Tommy Frazier went for the home run. Illegal block against Florida State. Attacked 15 yards on that. 
Frazier went all the way downfield. Hawkins, 38, was open about 15 yards deep. He's got the, a live arm, though. Yeah, here's the outside receiver. Zone coverage by Florida State. Corey Fuller up front. Leon Fowler in the back. Fowler with a fine catch oh, I'll tell you. for the interception. Excellent play by Leon Fowler, who had some problems in the SEC and some of the opposition earlier this season. Getting beat deep. Well, you can see that the Nebraska is certainly in a desperate situation to make uh, things happen as quick as possible here. Throw the ball up. Try to uh, find one of your receivers. Make a, a great play. And after Florida State's 7 minute and 48 second drive to score, Nebraska had the ball for a grand total of 14 seconds there, John. Let's go downstairs quickly to John Dockery. Doc? Uh, thank you, Crick. I'm underneath the stadium here trying to stay warm with Bob, who is uh, the departing athletic director for Nebraska. 31 years, uh, Bob, never a losing football season. Who are some of the players, what are some of the big games that you remember over those 31 years at Nebraska? Well, Trev Alberts, the tackle for Nebraska. Bob Allen were uh, great football players, and and uh, Willie, Willie Ross, Rudy Johnson, uh, Lloyd Boss, and uh, Larry Kramer. A lot of guys went on and played pro ball. And then uh, in the last few years, why we had guys like Johnny Rogers there that was a very, very outstanding player. And then during one period of time, they had Mike Rozier, Irving Fryer, some of those players. I remember those players. The game I remember most was the game we played Oklahoma when we were one and two in the country and played them in Norman, Oklahoma and won the ball game 35-31. Some, some great memories, some great moments. We thank you for it and good luck in the future to you, Bob. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bob Devaney, a hallmark name in college football. Finley's from the spot of the foul. We'll go half the distance to the goal line. Repeat second down. That completion to uh, Mr. Hanover, Tamarik Hanover, an excellent throw by Charlie Ward, but uh, the penalty negates it. Now Florida State backed up, got to protect the ball. They, the only way that Nebraska can get back in this football game is you watch the throw to to uh, Vanover just over the outstretched hands of the cornerback. They can't turn it over here, Down, They got to protect it. Robbins with the mics down on the field. This high-tech equipment does not respond well to rain, as you might imagine. There is a give to Tiger McMillan, and Nebraska's down linemen stay home and make the stop. David White making a lot of plays, number 96. He's right over the center. He reads this as a draw trap, and he's right there to uh, make the, the tackle on Ty Tiger McMillan, or little or no game. <laughs> Let me get out in the field and see how it does out there, okay, Terry? It might have been just because. On the scoreboard, they have it marked second down and 20 coming up. On the field, they have it third down and 20. Got an injury here for uh, Florida State's offensive line. Uh, Stevenson, Rob Stevenson coming off to the sideline being assisted by the trainers. And here comes the rain again, Don. Yep. Big time. I mean, it is exactly that, sheets of rain. Florida State, obviously a team that practices in a lot of rain, and North Florida and Tallahassee, various times during the year, seems to operate well in it. Nobody plays better in rain than the Miami Dolphins. Henley Markers go down at the snap of the ball with two minutes and 58 seconds to play in the third quarter. They're down the field being attended to is tackle Robert Stevenson. Yeah, he's uh, looking at his uh, shoulder as uh, Florida State uh, uh, moves off the ball here. Stevenson having the uh, doctor look at his right shoulder. He has been a real standout at tackle. Not an especially big player, but tremendously quick. With a penalty call so far tonight. Florida State with more yardage assessed against them, but they've overcome it. Now from the end zone, what is a throw in the rain from his own end zone is Charlie Ward, but wait, oh, he's on the run, and he's in the open field. Darden moving ahead and getting across the 15-yard line, still way short of the first down. That was a third and 24 play. 
He'll be about 13 yards short of the first down, so Florida State sends out his punter. Don, that looked like a design play. Watch when he rolls. It looks like the offensive line are going to set up for a pass. There is pressure from the outside, but Ward so very gifted at running the ball away from pressure. He doesn't pick up, pick up the first down, but he certainly gives his punter an awful lot of room. A lot more comfortable for Mr. Wimbler, Wimberly. John Wimberly ready to boom the ball. Big rush. Nebraska goes for the block. Almost got to it. Running with the ball now is Tyrone Hughes for the Cornhuskers, and he's down to the 47-yard line of Florida State. Sterling Palmer on the tackle, a 36-yard punt and a 6-yard return. Huskers to go on offense when we come back. 150 to go in the third quarter. Nebraska with the ball, trailing 27 to 7. First down 10 play, a power set. Double tight end, three backs. On near side, and Calvin Jones breaks it open down to the 40 yard line. A gain on the play of about seven or eight yards. Our thanks for tonight's overhead shots to Captain Maloney and the crew of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes from Pompano Beach, Florida. Uh, you know, uh, they give uh, a most valuable player award to a player, but uh, the good captain up there deserves something for keeping that blimp up in this rainstorm and the camera still working. And no lightning, that might not be a great place to be when the lightning starts up. I don't want to be up there in the rainstorm, Don. Second down play. Florida State playing the run all the way. Hodrick McIntosh, the nose tackle, makes the stop. Guy starting up after the plays. There's another penalty marker down off the line of scrimmage, and it's going to apparently be against Nebraska. At least Florida State thinks so. Yeah, it looked like, uh, looked like an offensive lineman got a little... Uh, Personal foul against Nebraska. Yeah, it is. It's Weger, the offensive right tackle. He... Uh, Carried a block a little too far downfield on uh, Ken Alexander and then took a punch at him. Normally they'll throw flags on that. Watch 72 down here in the bottom of the screen if we can see the end of the play. He gets on Alexander. Now they're going to go out of frame. But uh, they were pushing and shoving and punching. They the get the Cornhusker. Last meeting between these two teams was in 1990 in the Fiesta Bowl when Florida State won going away 41-17. And that game was keyed by turnover play. Nebraska turned the ball over three times in the first quarter. And Coach Osborne saw his team fall behind because of it. There's the push and shove by Wiegert on Alexander. That resulted in the penalty. Negated the capital offense at all. Replay. Everybody's still 15 yards. Frazier swings it over to Calvin Jones and he takes it up ahead. Here's another penalty marker down as Florida State had it defensed. Reggie Freeman may be called for defensive holding here. Mark and Simpson on the tackle. Are they going to call it on the offense? It was Reggie Freeman who was held apparently because he was protesting something to the official. Bill Gross from the SEC, our referee, and his mic is gone right now. See if we can pick it up on the right-hand side of the screen. Yeah, there's the grab. It is on Reggie Freeman. He was the one who was held. You called it correctly, Mr. Crickey. And it brings us down to one minute to play in the third quarter. Huskers, despite their 27-7 disadvantage, huddling at their leisure and getting ready to punt the ball back to Florida State. Mike Stiggy. They thought his kicking might be a factor in the outcome of tonight's game. The best net average punter in the NCAA Division I record this year. Hits it downfield, and Corey Sawyer lets it roll, and Florida State will take over the ball. First and 10 at the Seminoles' 21 yard line. Sunday, join us at 12 noon Eastern Time as playoff football comes to NBC. Buffalo Bills have gone to the Super Bowl, as you know, the past two years. Each time they've come away with a loss. This season, the Bills let the AFC East title slip away in the last game of the season. 
Could it be that Buffalo is no longer the AFC power has been for the past few years? Sunday before the Bills battle the Oilers, tune in to NFL Live as O.J. Simpson examines the Bills' predicament. We saw the latest news with Bob Costas, O.J. Simpson, Will McDonough, and special guest Cincinnati Bengals quarterback Boomer Esiason. It's all Sunday at noon at 12 o'clock Eastern time, and then it's on to Ritz Stadium for the rematch of last Sunday night's game, the Oilers and the Bills, this time with the winner advancing. Now on the run, Sean Jackson breaking the by the Nebraska defenders and running it all the way down to the 31-yard line. Boy, a surprise starter for Florida State. He's had a big game in bad weather situations. That's a 42-yard pickup. Excellent blocking up front. The offensive line from the two-point stance. Watch Floyd, 44. He hits Anderson, 48 on the outside. Nice move by Sean Jackson. Big pickup. First down, Florida State. Big block on the play by the tackle, John Fla. 42 yarder gets the Seminoles in scoring position to get the least challenging to set up a score as Ward takes a deep drop in the rain. Emily Marker goes down and Charlie Ward pumps faking, takes it on a run. It could be a holding call on Florida State. It is against Florida State. You know, I don't want to digress, but we did that promo on uh, NFL Live. You realize this weekend we have an Orenthal and a Norman on NFL Live. Orenthal James Simpson and Norman Julius Esiason <laughs> talking about football. Buffalo, despite its injury problems and despite the fact that Bills were manhandled on Sunday night at the Astrodome, Bills will take the field as a favorite. Here's the infraction now as Charlie Ward starts to scramble. Ooh, cutting the legs. Cutting the legs. Not a good idea. That's Flaffick in number 68. Uh, I understand also in that uh, Buffalo Houston game that Cody Carlson will probably be the starting quarterback and for sure it's going to be Frank Wright for Buffalo. Jim Kelly is definitely out of that game and this week Cody has taken more snaps than Warren Moon has in the practice sessions, although Moon has been practicing. He'll be in uniform and active. Tiger McMillan runs the ball, and that'll do it for three quarters of play. As Florida State builds on its halftime lead of 20 to 7, to where they've now extended it 27 to 7. Back after these words from your local stations. King Orange smiling in the rain here at the Federal Express Orange Bowl. Speed wins, and Nebraska Alabama cannot handle the team speed of Florida State if there's even the slightest defensive mistake on offense. The Seminoles Trump just beat it with blinding speed. They all can run. And it appears when they're working, it, it looks so easy. I mean, the receiver's wide open, Don. Blitz hit. At time, the Huskers come with an outside blitz. Trev Alberts, number 34, came through. That is the first sack of the day for Nebraska. One of the things that they wanted to do was to get on Charlie Ward. Alberts comes from the outside, beating the offensive tackle for a pretty easy sack. Long way to go now for Charlie Ward on the Seminoles offense as it'll be third down and 34. You got Tamarik Van over the top of your screen. The long ball offense all by himself out there. Do we uh, pencil in the reverse? No. Nope. Pencil in Tiger McMillan. Back to Doc on the sidelines in the rain. Perhaps you thought I left, Crick and Trump. I'm still here. Don't worry about it on the soggy sidelines. Couple of things. Travis Hill, knee injury, fairly serious. You will not see him back today for Nebraska. Also, if you take a look at the field, it actually has terrific drainage because it's prescription turf. It has pumps underneath the turf to get the water out of here. So the rain itself won't collect that much on the field. Still very soggy down here. Back to you guys in the dry booth. <laughs> well, a semi dry booth here, Doc. We're not completely safe yet. Here's a kick downfield, and Corey Dixon, who caught the touchdown pass, runs the ball back across the 30 and gets to the 32 yard line. That's a very difficult development for that great young player for Nebraska. Their outside linebacker, Travis Hill, with the knee injury that John Dockery was talking about, 
because he is projected as a high round NFL draft choice a consensus all American. Yeah it does affect him big time because the the NFL combine is uh, not too long from now and uh, the ACL the anterior cruciate ligament normally requires surgery I certainly wish the best for Travis Hill that is awful news. First down Nebraska. And they're all 30. Tommy Frazier and the Cornhuskers go first and 10 from their 30. And a quick hitter up the middle. Derek Brown, Derek Brown runs the ball ahead for a gain of about four yards. Trailing 27-7 in the fourth quarter. They get the ball and they run a lead play. There's Charlie Ward on the sideline. Headset on. Well, it won't be long. Less than 20 hours, he'll be playing basketball. You don't have to worry about rain on the basketball court. Mark Vano was a good basketball player. Also, they had the team agility drills. He hit on. You look at Frazier throw the quick out and hit Vincent Hawkins. And Mark Vanover had a uh, standing leap, vertical Vincent leap of 40 Hawkins. inches. And Coach Bowden says to the coaches, next time he jumps, I want the door closed. I don't want to see Kennedy, the basketball coach, seeing this. <laughs> well, again, uh, I hate to repeat myself. It's a little bit different. 27-7, uh, fourth quarter, and Nebraska runs a lead and then a quick out. Uh, this is just not a big play home run offense. Straight ahead, they go to Calvin Jones. Nebraska's success in the recent Calvin years built on the power here. running game like the old Yankee teams where they used to build up a five or six run lead in the third innings and then start to pull away. These guys used to come out powering the ball, touchdown after touchdown. Yeah, the uh, Yankees used to survive on that uh, a bloop, a bloop, and a blast. Yeah, they did add up in a hurry, wouldn't it? That's Marvin Jones. Hey, y'all, if you're here, Marvin Thunder. Marvin Jones. Spoken word there on the sideline to be heard as he give again goes to Calvin Jones for Nebraska, and he dives across the 45 yard line. I don't know what to say about these big eight teams that come down here. You know, when they come down here and. and uh, when Nebraska has been good man they're awful good and they can overpower football teams but look at here the, the, the 2.9 yard average each one of these running backs has rushed for a thousand yards uh, Jones seven to a carry Brown six yards a carry but they come down in this orange bowl and it just doesn't work right, not even a little bit it was close for a while and here now as Frazier takes a deep look, he's going to be on the run. He'll beat the linebacker, head for the sideline, and get out of bounds inside the 40. Corey Sawyer, number eight, came up and stuck him. Sawyer, the lightest player on the defense of the Seminoles, but a terrific player. 16-yard gain on the run by Frazier. Good choice here by Frazier. Yeah, it's a play-action fake, slight little roll, and he sees nobody open, and... He does have good running skills. All Nebraska running backs through the years, I should say quarterbacks through the years, have had good running skills. I asked Corey at 160 pounds, and he's noted for playing the run and coming up and really with run support hitting hard. I said, yeah, hurt you know, not yet. It'll happen. <laughs> it will happen. Downfield throw, and Dixon has the ball and goes to the one-yard line. Frazier's made some brilliant throws. That was one of them, a 37-yarder down to the one-yard line. Leon Fowler was the man in coverage. Again, the, a little play-action fake. See right at the top of the screen, boy. Dixon goes right by Fowler. If he catches it cleanly, he scores. But he has to catch it on the rebound. Fowler able to catch up. And it's first and goal for Nebraska. Hey, Dixon's having a career here for the rest of the season. Probably is going to get foul balls in a year, or in, a, in four years at Nebraska. Great play. End zone touchdown. And it's taken in by Gerald Armstrong. Most of the ones he catches are for touchdown. That is his ninth reception of the year. Eight have been for touchdowns. Well, the tight ends for Nebraska catch touchdown passes. Of the 16 that have been caught by Nebraska tight ends, now 10 
of the 16 receptions by Nebraska, 10 by tight ends for scores. And he just releases off the line of scrimmage. They drop him. Seven plays, 70 yards. Three minutes and five seconds. Nebraska in the end zone. Root. Point after is hit up and good. And the Huskers now have 14. And are two touchdowns away. They'll be kicking off in a moment. The Federal Express Orange Bowl is brought to you by Federal Express. For documents, packages, and freight worldwide, our most important package is yours. By Hertz, the people's choice in rent-a-car for 75 years. By Intel, the computer inside. And by Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy and John Dockery back at the 59th Federal Express Orange Bowl. Nebraska. It's the touchdown throw from a yard out, and now the Huskers kick off, trailing 27 to 14 to Florida State, a bobble ball. This is a man dangerous any time he has in his hands, though. Tamaric Vanover. And the Huskers sweep down on special teams and take under Tamaric Vanover, so Florida State will start inside its 10-yard line. We go back to the uh, touchdown by Gerald Armstrong. He's right here. There's a move that defensive linemen use in pass rush called a swim move. Watch the way Armstrong swims over that defensive lineman. Frazier finds him in the end zone, lobs it there, he catches it. His ninth catch of the year, his eighth for a touchdown. I like that percentage. The tight ends are always open, aren't they? Yeah. Always open. The Florida State coach was saying you can read what their offense is going to do. Uh, he said if their tight end releases and runs a pad, it's definitely a pass. Most of the time, they never come off the line of scrimmage. They're in there like another tackle. Yeah, they've got another tight end on that Nebraska offense of 265 pounds. You can see the soggy conditions and Florida State again starting out very conservative. Jackson, who has been a, a big part of the offense here in the second half. This one has a long way to go. Nine minutes and 43 seconds to play. Rain has almost stopped now as Charlie Ward drops to the end zone again with that step forward and look at the throw. They were running that all week in practice, the sideline curl pattern, where oftentimes the ball is delivered before the break of the receiver. That's their pattern. 13-yard gain. McCorvey on the catch. You see the inside release. He, he convinces Will Height, the defensive back, 19. He's going deep. Perfect timing. Well, that, that's almost indefensible. Beautifully run. You don't see a lot of colleges David on who are that sophisticated hour. at running patterns and the timing of the pass. And immediately they go to the shotgun. They get a little room behind them. Back to the shotgun. Ward fires and makes a connection. Tanarik Vanover has the ball on a first and ten play out to the 30-yard line. Vanover, oddly enough, a great receiver, was a high school All-American as a running back and as a defensive back. Yeah. He wasn't a receiver. No. And, and they don't know all that this kid can do. Again, the inside release. He just finds the spot inside the linebacker, underneath Reese, the cornerback. Easy completion. He's so good, he's so gifted that sometimes and he'll be the first to admit it. He doesn't work as hard as he might in practice, and the coaches really jump on him. He's got a terrific attitude. He responds to it and, and starts to go hard, but he's just so gifted that it's almost like men against boys. Oh, was intended for Kevin Knox. Yeah, as a matter of fact, when the season started, he was upset. He'd never been on the bench. Coach has said, son, you better work hard here. There are some good athletes out here. We realize you're one of the best, but you got to show the coaches that you're willing to go through the effort. Uh, he put forth the effort, and the uh, the results have been remarkable. I mean, it, this guy's had eight kickoff returns for a 51-yard average. He didn't have enough uh, in the ACC to uh, qualify. He would have won it by almost 25 yards of return. The reason he didn't have enough, Florida State doesn't give up a lot of touchdowns. And it's screwed up. It's screwed, too. Anybody that leads the nation in kickoff returns is playing for a disaster. Oh, they're, right. they're not going well when you get a lot of kickoffs. Not going return. well. You are right. That's that 265-pound tight end I was talking about that Nebraska has on their program. William Washington, one of the uh, tri-captains for 
Nebraska, an extra tackle. Now on first down and ten, Charlie Ward sets up in the shotgun offense. Here comes the rush. Charlie again steps up. Ball on the field. Manover falls on him at the 33. Seminoles keep the ball. Well, we've documented throughout the game the use of the spy against Charlie Ward. Here's David White, 96. He's coming on the blitz. Picked up and picked up nicely by Sean Jackson, 35. Fumble. Van over there to pick it up. The ball has bounced Florida State's way all night. Well, as Osborne said at halftime, we're not going to stop playing hard, and they haven't done that. Down 27 to 14 with 7.40 to play. Not much there. Nebraska's big D linemen stay there. John Perella with another big play. He has evolved through hard work into one of the better defensive linemen in college football. He was first advised to go to junior college. They run the screen here to Jackson. Perella's right there to make the stop. Almost pulls his uh, uniform off of him, but does get him down. Big, strong kid is Perella. Now on third down and ten, a ball in the air, and the screen pass works. And the open field is Sean Jackson. Finally. No, they do not get him. Now they do, but it's all the way down to the 37-yard line of Nebraska. Third and ten, and Bobby Bowden calls the right numbers. A 32-yard gain on a screen play to Jackson. On the uh, Nebraska defense runs a lot of stunts, and you see the stunts here. Everybody trying to put pressure on Ward. The net result is once they get by the line of scrimmage, watch how open this is. Actually, there should have been a flag there. There was a receiver that blocked downfield illegally while that ball was in the air, but it results in a big gain and a first down again for Florida State. Into the game quickly as an extra wide receiver. And now a Florida State realizing they were going to run out of time calls a timeout. Not quick. Not quick. I'm not quick. Here on NBC, right now at the Federal Express Orange Bowl with 6.25 to play in the game. It's 27 14. Florida State in the lead and with the ball. Let's go back down to Doc on the sideline. Hey, uh, Crick, what would you do on a rainy, miserable night? You might do a little baking for yourself. Let's see what we have cooking in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little ball. Yeah, it takes about two minutes. It's a ball warmer on the sidelines behind the Florida State bench. So they do get dry balls in there. As a matter of fact, it feels nice and warm and toasty, though. I don't think it's quite done yet. I'll put it back in for a little longer, right? Come back if you want to know more about it. How about that guy you're with? Is he, the, is he a specialist in that? He looked pretty serious about it. <laughs> I noticed there was an out bin there. You mean there's an in bin? <laughs> Can you put a football in the wrong end of that machine? Running play. Tyrone Bird comes up and makes the stop on Tiger McMillan. Well, you hate to speak uh, poorly of Nebraska's football program, but Tom Osborne and his football team about to go down to their sixth straight bowl loss and uh, tempers flaring. A little frustration on the part of uh, Nebraska. Uh, this is one of the most honorable gentlemen you'll find in this country. It's not, it's not hard to root for both of no, these coaches. I you agree will find two finer individuals on the sidelines. And Coach Bowden and Coach Osborne. Here's a big stick put on. Dante Jones comes in. And look. A full load of steam levels quarterback Charlie Ward of Florida State. Osborne in his 20th season, we pointed out earlier, has an 81% winning percentage, the best of any active coach, but not in bowl games. Charlie Ward doesn't even see this guy. Dante Jones just hits him from the absolute blind side. Ward does get up, walks to the sideline. He appears to be okay. Pat Kennedy, don't worry about it. He's fine. He'll be your point guard. Just give him 24 hours. This is Osborne's 20th year as head coach of Nebraska. He's won or shared in nine Big Eight titles. But you know, in a conversation we had with him, he said, you know, the Big Eight is changing. Colorado throws the ball 50 times a game. With uh, the gun kid at Oklahoma, they throw the ball 35 or 40 times a game. Gone are the days of the uh, 
the wishbone at Oklahoma and Barry Sanders and Thurman Thomas running it at Oklahoma State that we're, we've turned into a passing conference and this club's coming up and it's certainly Kansas under Glenn Mason has come up with a big season one of the Aloha Bowl there's a kick downfield and on the run with the ball is Tyrone Hughes and a lot of Seminoles are there to take him down at the 20. Let's, let's not lose our cool here gentlemen. 4.43 to play in the game. And we'll be back to the Federal Express Orange Bowl in a moment. Charlie Ward's now going to announce the game. Oh, actually, that's talking to the coaches. <laughs> Maybe he's talking to Dad. Headset there, yeah. Frazier in trouble. Let's it go deep. Closing on the ball is cornerback Clifton Abraham. And the man they call Little Bunny, shortest player on the Florida State team, makes a big play. Well, there was great pressure on Frazier. He couldn't really follow through, so he couldn't really get it all the way. A, a little roll. And I see some substitutes in there for the Florida State defense. 58 Footman, the guy whose nickname is Bigfoot, just gets in. Uh, just gets in Frazier's face and up. Watch Bigfoot, 58. That'll keep you from following through. That's why the ball was short, and therefore the interception by Clifton Abraham. Now this he was saying to us, probably, this might be the best set of cornerbacks he's ever had. I mean, you're most astounded by that when you consider people like Buckley and Deion Sanders. Yeah, there's others, too. Bobby Butler was an awful good uh, cornerback for the Florida State Seminoles. They've had a history of great cornerbacks. Of course, these, these two cornerbacks for uh, Florida State, uh, Terrell Buckley is a guy that both of them talk to and talk to a lot. Uh, he helps them. They love man-to-man. -man. They love bump and run. They love making the big play. Well, before the game, talking to some of their offensive coaches, they were really going to test Nebraska deep because he said their corners almost want a trail coverage cutter. They almost look like going to step out and follow him. fast. They thought they could beat him deep for that target. Oh, nice play, I think, coach. Dolly Ward takes it inside the 45-yard line. When Ward first started at quarterback, they tried to get him to take the crossover drop, pass drops, and he didn't feel he could see the field well enough, and then they realized, being a point guard in basketball, he likes to face the whole floor and see everything, so once he went to the shotgun or the fast break offense, as they call it, Charlie Ward was like he was back on the hardwood, yeah. seeing everything and delivering the ball all over. Now, speaking of hardwood, too, look at, look at the numbers there for basketball. Last year, Florida State played and beat North Carolina. And Dean Smith, after the game, the, the Ward had a particularly good game. And Dean Smith walked up and said, son, stay with basketball. Gives off now, running ahead of Sean Jackson. He's down inside the 35-yard line for a first down. He loves challenges, Charlie Ward. He's looking forward, he said, to January 24th, but he'll go head-to-head -head with Bobby Curry. He said he's the best point guard. That's yeah. what I want to play against. Uh, this is the uh, lead offense. Jackson now on the day, 14th carry there, 102 yards and a touchdown. So they've gotten a lot of offense out of a lot of different people. Van Overs had a big night over uh, close to 100 yards of total offense, 102 yards rushing there. A first down call, pitch back. Make the reverse. Jackson still has it. The basket's not biting. They stay home and make the stop for a loss. Game clock down to 2.20 to play. Tackles to Reese and Albert. Interesting that uh, apparently in bowl games, Sean Jackson is a big game player. Last year in the uh, Cotton Bowl against Texas A&M, he had over 100 yards rushing, too. So Bobby Bowden knows what he's doing, and Jackson has been uh, tough. Tiger, Tiger McMillan is the guy that we thought was going to start. In the last moment, Jackson inserted into the lineup. He has responded. Hurt his knee in the Jordan Tech game. Missed three games for the Knowles. John Jackson obviously back in great health tonight. As the handoff again goes to Jackson. Shooting the back is your spy man, Trump, David White. He's been busy tonight, but they actually needed about three of him. <laughs> you, you can't use one spy on Charlie That's Ward. That's about right. You need one, either side and one in the middle Absolutely. of the field. 
one man just can't do the job. Loss of four on the play. I would think that Charlie Ward is the leading candidate to win the next Heisman Trophy. We're back at the Federal Express Orange Bowl. 142 to play in the game. Florida State in command throughout had a 20 to 7 halftime lead. And it now stands at 27 to 14 as Florida State will again finish with just one loss. A field goal margin was the difference when the Knowles played the Hurricanes of Miami. Coach Bowden, it's one of these years it has to happen where he makes the breakthrough season and wins a national championship. Well, if the score in the Sugar Bowl remains as it uh, sits now, it looks like Florida State will be number two behind Alabama, right? Now let's take a look at the Federal Express Orange Bowl most valuable players. Charlie Ward is the man who gets the award. The man who is really figures in about 80% of the Florida State offense. Yeah, what's not there, of course, is the yards he's run tonight. He is in uh, total control of this offense. You're right, Don. And uh, they got him for another year. And for, for Nebraska, Corey Dixon, five catches, 123 yards and a touchdown. And now while we have a moment, let's go back to New York. Jim? All right, thanks a lot, Don. We've been telling you all day about the resignation of Coach Larry Smith at the University of Southern California. Within the past two hours, Smith spoke to reporters overwhelmingly emotionally, as it turned out. Here now is a brief excerpt from that news conference. <laughs> but I've always preached to my players that... Uh, he never quit, and I, I want to make sure that that comes across, but uh, uh, I didn't quit. So call it the forced resignation of Larry Smith. Obviously, it was not his idea to leave the coaching job behind. And sources tell me tonight, SC hopes to hire a football coach within the next few days. Don Crickey. Thank you, Jim. And Deference to Larry Smith, he's been a great winner, Trump, in a lot of games. He's won a lot of big games. It was a tough year. The lack of success against Notre Dame and certainly against Fresno State in the bowl game, but this guy's been a terrific football coach for 25 years. Uh, Don, there are programs around, and coaches have uh, created those programs where uh, there's a limit to how much you can lose. I mean, there, there's just no way around it. Huskers will be firing here with a minute and 20 to go, down by 13 points. Tommy Frazier, the freshman quarterback, takes the drop, and now on the rollout, looking to unload. He does, it's incomplete. And while we have a moment, we tell you that the executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. Today's game was produced by Terry Ewart, directed by John Gonzalez. Bowl Day 93 was produced by John McGinnis, directed by Kelly Atkinson. Associate Directors Doug Grabert, Mary Buda Lamusio, Bruce Clark, and Dave Katz. Production Associates Molly Solomon, Billy Matthews, Steve Harismiak, Francine Winokur, and Sam Flood. Technical Manager Art Parker. Production Managers Ken Goss, Susan Aston, Rodney Green. Technical Directors Mitch Geller and Richard Sansevier. We thank them all and also our NBC statistician Ross Schneiderman as the Huskers go to the run with 106 to play. And certainly thanks to the Orange Bowl Committee headed by President R. Ray Good and President-elect Robert Epling and Executive Director Steve Hatchell. Ron, as this game winds down, if there's a stat that tells Nebraska's problems coming into this game, they average 328 yards rushing tonight, 132. That is an overwhelming stat. The strength of Nebraska was taken away by the Florida State defense. And the 50 seconds to play. And the bowl game losing streak now mounts to six in a row for Coach Osborne. A sack, a final ignominy for Nebraska. Reggie Freeman, who plans to play in the NFL and then go to the FBI. This guy does tremendous good work up in the Tallahassee area, working with disadvantaged kids. He's a real standout off the field. Reggie Freeman playing with a bad knee, but still get the job done. They were going to hold him out. He wouldn't hear it, and here he comes again. A long ball downfield. Incomplete with two seconds to play. We'd also like 
Dr. Frank from Florida State, their president, Dr. Dale Lick, and A.D. Bob Coyne, sports interaction director, Wayne Hogan, and Donna Turner, the spotter for the Seminoles, Joey Ferralito. And for University of Nebraska, Chancellor Graham Spanier, A.D. Bob Devaney, Associate SID Chris Anderson, and spotter Steve Hill. One final play. And we'll be going right to New York as the ball is given up the middle, and that will do it. Florida State wins again. The Federal Express Orange Ball goes to the Seminoles. 27 to 14. Now for John Dockery and Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey. We send you now to Jim Lampley in New York.